Hello everyone and welcome to Mage the Ascension, the Victorian Age, here on Onyx PathsCon. Uh, I am your storyteller, Kelly. Uh, if you're joining us here, this is our our home channel and it is good to be back here. I've been on a couple of other channels this weekend uh, watching other people around on Dork Tales, which is weird. Kind of weird. <laughs> Especially because I was on Occultus Anonymous while Occultus Anonymous was on my place and they messed up. They left like a tuna sandwich just sitting on the counter. <laughs> And the entire place Rude. just smells like like old mayo now. It's weird. Anyway. Jeez, guys, come on. We love you. We love you. <laughs> we love you. They... Wait, it's a convention. Wouldn't it be like empty ramen bowls? <laughs> oh yeah, pizza boxes True. and Mountain Dew cans. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mountain, Dew. Mountain Dew cans. As long as they're not leaving body paint all over the bathrooms. <laughs> just just glitter. Paint. Just glitter. bodies all over the bathroom. We're uh, just bodies. fine. We that up. All right. So, uh, <laughs> folks, thank you for being patient while I went and got all of my clothes on. I was just in a game of They Came From, uh, which is a horror slasher style game. And uh, I got I got to admit, I really like it. I think I might actually get a copy for my players and run it on the channel sometime because it is dopey as hell. Uh, but we're going to be playing a much more serious game tonight, uh, today. Uh, and so, as we're going into this, hi everybody, we're playing Mage the Ascension of the Victorian Age. If you know nothing, nothing about Mage the Ascension, uh, don't worry. I'll walk you through it, we'll take it hand, step by step, and I'll try to make it make sense to myself as well as you. Uh, right now, uh, here I have three of my players from the regular Mage the Ascension game that you can find on here on twitch.tv slash dorktales or youtube.com slash dorktales uh, if you want to watch back episodes. Go ahead and take a look at some of the best stuff we've done. It's fantastic. Um, However, Krista has not very much experience with Mage of the Ascension and has not really played much of it in years. So um, they are going to be walked through it with me and I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to do kid gloves on this to make it easy. But speaking of walking through and making sure that everyone's on the same page, before we begin, I just want to say that though we're at Onyx PathCon, um, I am going to tone down some of the content from our normal game, which is a much more mature game. But tonight we'll exhibit some of the following things. Um, so, some content warnings for tonight. Death, murder, violence, mental health, gambling, and imprisonment. These are all things that may occur tonight. Um, and uh, pro probably on some cases will, uh, to be honest. Um, oop, that's my calendar. Oop, there we go. All right. Uh, so, folks, uh, thank you very much for your patience while I just got... Uh, got everything set up for this. I hope that you're going to have a fantastic time. And with that, I'm just going to get our music done. We're going to do super quick intros, uh, and then it is time to start the game. Uh, so first of all, I'm Kelly. I'm the storyteller here at Dork Tales. I'm happy to be here. I use he and him as my pronouns, and Mage is one of my favorite games. Very excited to be here. Um, let's pass it over to Christine. Hello, I am Christine. I use she, her pronouns, but today I am playing Benjamin Gardner, who uses he, him. Um, he is a member of the Lightkeepers specifically. They're lanterns and torches, which eventually become part of the NWO. No. NWO. No. Uh, That's an in joke. It's NWO. It's NWO. Yeah. I can't resist. They're they're basically like spies and G-men. At least they are in the Victorian age. Um, they are the equivalent back then. So besides that, let's go over to Amy. Hello, that's me. Hi, I am Amy. I use she, her, they, them pronouns. And tonight I will be playing, or today, oh my God. Today I will be playing Edwin Blythe, the uh, uh, invisible exchequer who is, uh, they are eventually, they're basically part of the syndicate. They become the syndicate. Them Mo and the money people. Golden Guild, I think. Money but like sneaky behind the scenes money and like some money illegal backroom sneaky stuff and eventually yeah. student loans yeah eventually absolutely mm -hmm. and uh yeah he, he uses he him he's a guy nice this is weird for me this is great yep. i'm excited <laughs> you're a handsome dude all right so uh next let's pass down to robin hello everyone i'm robin i use she her pronouns and tonight i am what the fuck is that noise? Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's ghost hunters. You're getting you're getting too far ahead. Yeah, I think my landlord's doing something outside. <laughs> no windows are all. Open. Welcome to the Victorian age. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaf blowers. We're very common. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm Robin. I use she her pronouns, and tonight I'm playing Henry Butler, who uses he him pronouns, and he is part of the Skeleton Keys, which uh, you might have gotten a sneak peek of hinted in from our last episode of Mage of the Victorian Age with Darcy 
Um, and what was I going to say? Um, yeah, he's like a spooky, supernatural, punchy in the face kind of kind of guy. Also part of the NWO later when they become, you know, actual part of the technocratic union. Um, so work I kind of work with sometimes the light keepers as well. But uh, kind of guns blazing versus, you know, more sneaky sneak. Nice. All right, and then finally, the, the new end of the Victorian age game, but uh, a pretty standard issue for Door Kills if you are on the channel often. Hi, Krista. Hello, uh, I'm Krista. I use she, her, or they, them pronouns. Um, and uh, I am apparently bucking the trend and uh, playing a lady today, um, but I clearly didn't get the memo. Although I do apologize for us, for me and Amy having very similar names. I <laughs> It's Ed, Ed, and, and Benry. Ed, Ed, and everyone else. It's Be Ed, Ed, um, Ed, and Benry is your name. There you go. Uh, Ed, Ed, and Enery. This is English. It's Ed, no, Ed, and Benry, because then you get Benjamin in too. Oh, they're, oh, fair, fair, fair. Yes, gotta get oh. everyone in there. Uh, I am playing uh, Edith Wright, um, and she is a member of the Electrodyne Engineers. Uh, so there's sort of two factions of that. There's one that's the more sort of, you know, thinking about physics and electricity um, and the more, and then the more practical side of things, uh, which is what she is. Uh, you are going to see her very regularly with a giant carpet bag, just Mary Poppinsing uh, all sorts of weird stuff. <laughs> uh, and I'm very excited to join you guys because you guys are incredible and you play mage immaculately and I hope I can hold up. You will, you will. You're incredible as well. Oh, All right. <clears throat> so as soon as Robin gets back from uh, shutting down her landlord's uh, mowing, apparently, <laughs> um, we are going to get started. Uh, so folks, does anybody have any questions about game? Probably quite a few. Uh, so here is the deal with this. I am going to just do a quick rundown for those of you who have not, who are just tuning in for the first time. Uh, the super quick rundown is we're going to use the magic system pretty much as is according to the book, with one exception. Magic is going to explode on tens. Okay, so if you use an Arate roll and you roll a 10, you get to keep re-rolling it until uh, it stops re-rolling. I'm also using the additional rule that, it's, I forget if it's a house rule or free your form rule, but uh, if you roll a 10 and then roll a one, the one doesn't kill that 10 because that sucks okay. that is the worst feeling in the game nice. it does so, suck when you lose out <laughs> it really sucks so we're not doing that uh besides that you cannot botch soak rolls uh you cannot botch damage rolls so ignore ones on damage and soak okay, okay. just just only only active rolls not reflexive rolls uh or internalized rolls right um Almost like secondary roles is what they should be called. But um, And then the last thing is, uh, if at any point in time I describe something that makes you uncomfortable, there are two ways you can you can just let me know. Um, players, you have complete control over anything uh, in a scene that would make you uncomfortable. You can just say, fade to black. Why don't we fade to black on this? You can do it super casual in a way that doesn't really like make it seem like you're you're bothered if you want to you or you can just say hey why don't we uh why don't we fade to black on this give me like an x sign with your hands um and or send me a pm we have a whisper chat uh i am happy to close any scene that you're not interested in um because yeah, that's respecting your players uh besides that if there's anything you'd like to suggest to a scene this is a one shot so let's have fun with it fill in some blanks uh, i will be drinking my lunch during this because i'm in four games today so pardon my it's not actually g fuel fuel how dare you break the immersion, Kelly? How I know, dare? right? I, I can pour, oh, I'll pour it into a into a goblet and I mean, there you me go. With my Starbucks cup. Oh well, the, I yeah. did. I did actually put Coke Zero into my <laughs> Victorian you, cup. Okay, so quick, quick. Oh, I should have got a teacup. I have so many. Tea quick cups. out of character note: In Gilmore Girls, Alexis Bledel hates coffee. That show is about coffee drinking more than anything. So she was drinking Coke the entire time. <laughs> so little little thing about Gilmore Girls. Um, all right, so uh, it is 11:51. I am going to ask y'all to keep an eye on the time because my ADD is going to make that a little difficult. We are in this game. Uh, the next one, we have to be out of here at 2:30 Pacific. So we have two and a half hours to to set it up and have a resolution. I think we can do it in two because I've cut the hell out of this plot. <laughs> nice. But yeah, when exactly does the next one start? It's three, right? So Krista has something that uh, they have to be my, at at two thirty. My thing has canceled. Oh. So 
Okay. If you guys aren't under a time limit, I can go a little bit late. I just okay. have to I am go totally make under a time limit. at my grandmother's house. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> folks, if you uh, if you like what we do here, we will also be uh, 30 minutes after this game, right here, are going to be running a game of Ghost Hunters, the World of Darkest game. Uh, we're going to be running the, the Long Night, and it's going to be fun. I actually really, really like the module. Um, so stick around for that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that should be good to go. Uh, besides that, uh, if you like what we do here, give us a sub, give us a follow, uh, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, y'all ready? Okay, let me just open the Victorian book, because that's the one thing. I cannot wait till this book actually comes out in, in, like, hard copy, because I've got a draft PDF, and it is, it's not the worst, but it's the worst. PDFs can be very good for searching things, but there are times where it's like scrolling and loading and you're like, oh my god. Not when it's draft because it doesn't have a table of contents yet. Yeah, yep. true. But at you least can't it's even one, like the Victorian jump does. around. The it's, copy it's, that, that you sent us has it? a really nice one, yeah. Yeah, it actually it. does. Yeah. It's got a really it's, good yeah. table of contents. Oh, because it wasn't opening for me. Huh, and and as someone that played the World of Darkness games back in the early 2000s and the table of contents being notoriously bad uh these ones are top notch okay and then open the mage book and then let's start um uh, mage 20th anniversary boom the yeah the pdfs are way better uh for, yeah. for use in live play and stuff especially because the the mage core book is 650 pages <laughs> and will take up your entire table so yeah all right so uh I have a fluid relationship with time. Yeah, I'm time fluid. What? It's yeah, I'm coming out about it. Chrono fluid is how we refer to it. It's just a paradox flaw, is what it is. Okay, hard <laughs> card cut two thirty, and uh, <clears throat> now I have a hard question I need to ask you right away. Uh, what is you? Do you have a team name? Do you have a name for your group? No. Nah? No. Okay. What? <laughs> no? Okay, Three so... guys, a girl, at a laboratory. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, then let us begin. Okay, and we will begin with... It is the close of the 19th century. Reason has begun its slow but inexorable march into dominance. Soon the world will be under the sway of rational thought, science, but most importantly, progress. As agents of Her Majesty's Order of Reason, you are charged with keeping the peace and guiding the masses toward a greater tomorrow abiding by the five-year plans and ten-year plans and so on passed down on high you are more than simple agents of change you are the heroes of a greater tomorrow this is the recruitment speech each of you heard when you joined the order of reason and yet being a will worker a changer a hero in Her Majesty's United Kingdom at this period of time is strange, to say the least. For today, when we meet our adventurers, the camera will pan through misty moors outside of London's boundaries. There at... I didn't look up the place, so we'll say... Uh, Hill Hillinghamshire. We will cut to deeply tilled fields. A tremendous farm, likely um, some type of uh, potato farm, or uh, what would they, what would they be? What would they be growing outside of England in the eighteen hundreds? Right. Wheat. Uh, Grain? Yeah. Yeah, wheat? I guess grain. Hops, so like, was, so, you know what? We're going to say that it is, it is autumn at this point. So I'm going to say it's squashes. 
it's going to be pumpkins and squashes uh, as far as the eye can see, rows and rows of them. At least it should be. But you, as the camera pans over, it will tuck low up one of these rows, and you will see that some of these pumpkins and squashes have rotted to their core. And along this trail, you will see no end of dead, desiccated rodentia. Mice littering a trail up to you where we will see our first investigator who would be arms deep in a rotting pumpkin at this point all right so henry describe yourself is all he right just, let me he... know if you can hear my lawnmower because my landlord is like uh, right outside my window <laughs> i can't hear anything Perfect. Great. It's just going to annoy me. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so as the camera pans up, you're going to see a stocky six foot three gentleman, red, dark red hair, beautiful um, manicured mustache. Are you just Michael Fassbender? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. I got, I got Henry now. Michael Fassbender. We're good. Okay. Yep. Um, Adorned with his uh, outing fedora, a oh, nice green, cl classic dark green uh, suit jacket, gold uh, cravat, and his are uh, his nice. Um, I was going to say blouse, but that is a woman's shirt. In this day and age, a blouse could work too. I think. I think it okay. was. I think it was still bandied back and forth. All right. So his his blouse dress shirt is rolled up as he is. Uh, I guess arms deep in a rotting squash. All right. So nearby, you will, as you kind of mill around inside, you're going to hear this. <laughs> as you pluck out. In the heart of it, something that is about the size of a tennis ball. It's hard and lumpy to the touch. And... As you pull it out, it's covered in pumpkin guts. Muck and seeds all rotted with flies. Who is nearby kind of doing the over-the-shoulder lean? Perhaps. Yeah, all right. So uh, we will go to Edith. Edith, please please describe yourself. Uh, Edith is very prim and proper. Um, she's probably in her, like, mid to late 40s. Um, and uh, But very everything is clean. Somehow she's wearing all white in this, like, disgusting field and is yet perfectly manicured and has not managed to get model over her uh and she's one of those women nicole kidman um, uh no jessica Tastain. uh no more um oh my gosh uh mamma mia oh why is going... that the only one i can pull from wow her? you're going with the big guns yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> like all right one. so you're meryl okay, streep yeah. Mer younger meryl streep oh so meryl uh, streep's yes. daughter who is who is a smoke show by the way <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, sort of, sort of the the mid forties. The the yeah, very Meryl Streep. Um, okay. uh, very like severe, but can soften. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, so she, uh, she but is uh, has a giant bag next to her that has like little legs that pop out of it so that it, it doesn't get dirty in the mud. So um, and she's exactly, yeah. uh, and then pulls out like little vials and tiny jars and different things to like take samples of stuff and is very very closely leaning over henry's shoulder to investigate what's going on so she doesn't miss anything there is a woman leaning over your shoulder with um a great presence mr butlers do you comment <laughs> good afternoon mom i don't I would assume that this is a, a a woman like you would be put off by the smell of this rotting glob. Oh well, you know, uh, one one must learn to uh, to carry on when such things are are scientifically relevant. What do you make of this? Well, um, uh, may I may I perhaps um, she'll reach in and grab like a a big dish and just like hold it out be like um do you mind uh of course he'll like kind of like try and scrape most so of you're the gonna pumpkin scrape some of guts off. on the inside you're gonna see that underneath some of the pumpkin guts now it's really clinging but as you scrape some of it off it looks like there's like paper underneath 
or maybe linen. And as you are kind of holding it out in front of the dish, it is going to and jump into the dish out of your hand as if it had a Mexican jumping bean inside of it. Just oh, blimey. And as that happens, we're going to zoom the camera back to uh, the other two of you. Uh, now, I'm assuming that being the socialites that you two are, uh, you may be having a conversation with the farmer that owns the field. Uh, the, the man who owns this field is one Augustus Tate. And uh, he's an old, severe, uh, scrawny British man with an Adam's apple that looks as if he literally swallowed an apple and it got stuck sometime in his adolescence. Um, he has a scraggly uh, growth of chin hair that he probably hasn't shaved in about three days uh, and is wearing a um, wearing a cap, as you do, uh, but more of like a like a like a page boy hat or a uh, like a Greek fisherman's hat and uh, wearing a set of of the uh i'm gonna say god what would a farmer have worn i'm gonna say that he knew that government government agents were coming so he put on his dress shirt which is absolutely 20 years out of fashion uh faded to all hell uh and worn in places where he had swept through it and his wife had to scrub the underarms and stomach so hard that it's basically threadbare at this point uh, he's wearing a, a set of overalls and a bow tie that is crookedly jaunted up toward his chin. And what do you look like, either of you? Um, sure. Uh, Benjamin is, um, I think Ryan Gosling in La La Land. Perfect. That's all I need. Just with more of this hairstyle. <laughs> Slim, but fit. Um, all right. He's a hottie. Got ya. Well, he's got three appearance. Nice. He's not bad looking here. Nice. And, um, and standing next to you is... Uh, Edwin is about... Let's see, I think I was going to go with 5'11", kind of short, kind of wiry. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's got long, dark, thick, dark brunette hair pulled back in a low ponytail. He's got like a white button-up shirt and a black vest. And he has a sword attached, like strapped to his waist. Is he Adam Driver? No, not quite. Oh, I was trying. Figure yeah. out who he is and think, let me know. Think more, honestly, I'm getting more Orlando Bloom vibes. Oh, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, except sure. without the facial hair. Oh, it sounds good. I was going to say Kit Harrington, I think, like, but I like, I like, like Orlando. That is also Bloom good, is too. Yeah. Kit Harrington. Mm. Yeah. I think, like, Benjamin has his sleeves rolled up, has, like, the jacket over his shoulder sort Appearance of thing. Appearance four now. Yeah. Yeah, very the, the more these roll up, the higher the dots get. Okay. Uh, now, Benjamin, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Sorry if I cut you off there after Ryan Gosling. No, um... I think he is remarkably immaculate, much like Edith. Somehow the mud is just not clinging to his shoes sort of thing. All right. So you are in investigating this, uh, the strange occurrences that have brought you to this. Uh, the birds are singing in the trees and you're going to be able to hear them, not just because you can hear them outside of Christine's window, but they are there. And what I would like is for those of you who are all here, if you are actively investigating, I'm going to give you a uh, a slight penalty to the roll, a uh, plus two difficulty, but everybody make me just like a passive perception and alertness roll. You could also roll awareness if you prefer, um, if you're not used to the difference in the system. Awareness is using your ears, uh, pardon me, alertness is using your ears, awareness is using your, your sixth sense. Um, is there any way to, like, is this just a, a passive thing, not like investigating? Sorry, what? I just I'll, I have a, a a specialty for spotting clues for using investigation in a roll. You so what you can do if you choose not to you do a perception roll on the surrounding area, you can focus down directly on this with investigation. Yes, I think that's what. Okay, Henry so you're going to tunnel vision on. on this strange tennis ball of goo. Yep. All right. So I was just going to kind of keep an eye out. Now, which one did you say was using your ears? So using your sen using your your physical senses is alertness. Okay. I thought you'd reverse them and I was really I, I confused I accidentally minute. did and then I, okay. I corrected myself, but I think you were already assembling your pool. Um, cool. So alertness is basically like your personal like sensory. Awareness is mystical. Yes. I was just worried I'd put too many dots into the wrong one because <laughs> okay. I wanted alertness. And anybody who needs to switch any dots around, it's a one shot. I don't care. Just keep it fair. Okay. All right. And uh, when you roll, uh, either hold up the number of fingers or pop it in the chat. 
Uh, what is uh, the difficulty? Difficulty, uh, if you're focused on that, I'm going to say it's difficulty seven for you. It's six for everybody else uh, if you're not focused on investigating something. Also, quick reminder that ones do subtract from your successes. Uh, and if you have no successes and ones, that is a botch. Five successes, of course, Benjamin. Sorry, uh, I missed what the difficulty was and I'm doing awareness. You're uh, doing awareness? Awareness is eight. Yeah. Eight? Cool. Yeah. Two successes. Uh, Edith, what'd you get? We're off to the races with a double botch. <laughs> okay. All Ouch. right. And uh, Henry, You're I had focused. one success, but then I rolled a one, so I just failed. Um, yep. I rolled seven dice and I failed. Okay, so focusing on this, um, you, so uh, Edith, I'm gonna say that, um, can I, may I, dict may I suggest a behavior? Please, please I'm gonna do. say this thing jumps and then looking down at it, it's going to roll and let out this noise. And I'm going to say that you just shriek and grab onto Henry, and that distracts you both. Fair. Yes. <laughs> ah! Oh. Uh, now, meanwhile, Benjamin, as you're speaking to this old farmer, you are going to notice that you can hear birds. They are universally roughly a quarter kilometer in all sides away from this field. They are giving this field the widest berth. And as you're looking around, that is very strange because right there you can see there's a starling nest. Right over there you can see that there's a robin's nest. Like there are nests all over here for the, uh, I guess for whatever birds don't fly away. So I said it was autumn. So they have not quite fallen away yet or they have not quite flown away yet because you can still hear them and you can even see some crows that are circling above in the distance but none of them are getting close to this field uh, and the magpies aren't coming by and they're the ones that are just absolutely fearless yes and actually as you glance down you might see why because littering the fields alongside these rodent corpses or carcasses i guess i should say uh are a number of bird carcasses and i'm talking ravens there are hmm. dead ravens, like, and we're talking English ravens, like yeah, big yeah. mothers. The proper ones. Yeah, <laughs> proper ravens. Yes. Um, they are very, like, dead in the troves around this field. And, well, that's not good. And as you are looking around, Edwin, you're going, the moment you set foot on this field, the hairs on the back of your neck have not sat down. There is something supernatural or or untoward in this field. There's something untoward in this field. Perfect. <laughs> you know what? Plus one XP for Orlando Bloomface. So, what do you all do? Are you talking to the... You're talking to the farmer? Yeah, I think I'm mm. um, trying to get... Okay, well, when did it start happening... What have you noticed? Etc. Well, I, I, I say that, um, so <clears throat> let me get my farmer voice on. Yeah, I'm not attempting a British accent. Well, I'll, well, just put on like British filter, right? It's click British filter on. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I, I did what everyone else was doing. And uh, when they came through offering to do the sales of the fertilizer, I thought, yeah, I could probably bring that in. It's a nice cheap, cheap substitute. Uh, and since then, I've had a great crop. But but this year, oh, I mean, I mean, all, all the others around here, the other fields, they've been doing quite well. But when it came time for me to, to grow, I, I don't know what, what, what's been going on. It, it, it's, it, it's rubbish, it is. All of the 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 squashes, the 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 dead and gone, and I'm a squash merchant, you see. Uh, my pa was a squash merchant. My, my papa's papa was. A, I don't know how do they. My father's fuck. My my daddy's daddy was. I don't know, what the hell do they say? Um, it was a squash merchant, <laughs> and um, uh, so you, your government pest control. Something like that. Yeah, there's a new new department heading up, trying to make sure that we keep on top of uh, anybody who might be trying to sell you a bad product. 
Oh yeah, it's probably. I mean, like he seemed like a reputable fella. I mean, well, I mean, you farmers are the backbone of the British Isles. Well, <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I suppose we are. Uh, Robin, you have a question? Oh, just while they're out in the field, um, Henry would like to throw up his spirit sense. Sounds fantastic. So make me an Arate roll. This is going to be a difficulty of three. And I want to know how does Henry do his magic science? Because we're in that weird middle era right now. Yeah. Um, can, can, can we be a bit goofy for this one shot? Uh, I mean... No, not even a little bit. <laughs> cool. Um, Henry's going to pull out his inspector badge that says uh, spirit inspector to try and get this to see the spirits. And so he's going to. The fact that you have that badge is enough of a focus <laughs> that you're just like, you're like, I've got this. Or I have this. I have this. Uh, yeah, so no, I was looking skeleton keys usually use, use things like badges badges or pamphlets to get you as their focus <laughs> if you want to make it sound cool you could have like a government badge that you wear that you just kind of flick with your finger to get that kind of noise just to um, yeah. like to center yourself yeah because that just sounds kind of cool and that's a cool character trait I love um, that. Yeah. so what i want from you is tell me how many successes you get on a three if you cast more than uh, if you get more than two successes you can also grant this to edith Cool. I rolled, my God, my dice. These are, these are Darcy dice and they, they are hating me um, because I rolled a one, a two, and a six. So I got one success. You got one success. All right. So you'll flash it up for a minute, uh, well, for, uh, for a moment. And as you look down, the ball rattles. And as you turn on Spirit Sight, you are going to see something that is going to shock you. You're going to see spiritual creatures arising from each of these pumpkins all of the rotted squashes in this lane dozens and dozens of sh ephemeral shapes going rising up with this kind of bone cracking old dusty bodies they're very small but as they're rising up i'm going to explain a little bit more as you're doing this i'm just going to cut back to uh to benjamin and edwin who are interrogating this man um what are you doing to get information out of him I think just trying to guide him through conversation. Edwin's got a little notebook and a pen, probably. Right. So, I mean, am I gonna get uh, am I gonna get any of my money back? I mean, they've oh. ruined my crop. Uh, potentially, we'll certainly put the forms in. Uh, can't guarantee, of course. Government, you know. Yeah, that's right. But I'll do my now, best. See if we can you... hunt this fellow down. Yeah. Tell us a little more about this sales individual well i mean uh, i'm sure it was above board um can you do me a manipulation and oh, I'd uh, love to. Ooh, probably leadership Ooh, i don't have leadership i In have like empathy and ex oh wait not expression intimidation e no because i'm an idiot hold on let me move something <laughs> okay i've got intimidation i have subterfuge <laughs> yeah subterfuge so okay, you, can cool. use, you can subterfuge do just find a way to make it a lie so Right, so we'll need to see some of the documentation for the... I'm not yeah. in any trouble, am I? No, 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 no. Just a bill of sale. Uh, um, yeah. Anything uh, to help track this individual down. Uh, yeah, of course. He said he was above ball. I mean... He's... Yes, well, if he's someone masquerading as a legitimate businessman, then that is of great concern to... Her Majesty and uh, um, the people. Yeah. Can you give me that? Give me that roll. Let's do it. Okay. So you said uh, subterfuge and manipulation. What's mm -hmm. my difficulty? Difficulty on this. He's a rube five. That's a two successes. Two six. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a man named Outman. Uh, uh, Outman. Uh, Outman. Uh, Outman. name is what you say. His name was. He was uh, an Egyptian fella. Came through. I mean, that's how I got all of them. Outman. Get. I'll get I'll get you the bill of sale. Uh, uh, uh Ganim, yes. Ganim, Mr. Ganim. Ganim. Mm. Ganim. Ganim. Oh, he had a weird accent. It was it was very strange. Um, hmm. but yeah, that's how I got a hold of all of them. And did he sell to the farms around? Uh. 
I know he tried, but I mean, a lot of people around here don't trust the foreigners, even if they are inside of the Queen's jurisdiction. But, you know, I, I, I did a bit of service when I was younger, traveled around a bit, and come to trust people. Hmm. Now, you say all of this, all of that, all of, all of what? Well, the cats. All of the mummified cats. And as he says that, we're going to pan to Henry, who is seeing the spectral forms of dozens upon dozens of mummified Egyptian cats, which were used as fertilizer by the Brits. So true. As Yo. they're rising out of the pumpkin patches and just going, What the bloody hell is this? <laughs> And at that, uh, Edith, looking down and investigating this, the ball is going to look at you and open its eyes. It is a cat skull wrapped in linens and it's going oh. to spit pumpkins <laughs> in your face and go. <laughs> and I think that's where we're going to smash cut to a title. And thank you so much, uh, uh, Ink Goblin, uh, one of our, our supporters, uh, has been sending me all sorts of British history. He actually um, uh, helped write the Victorian Age book, and he's like, did you know this? And I'm like, oh, oh I did not! <laughs> I knew Holy they f- ate mummies. I didn't know they, they used it as fertilizer. They, they ate them, yeah, they snuffed them. They used mummies for everything. There was yeah. a paint color called Mummy Brown. <laughs> Wild. Are you oh, my mummy? All this sort of stuff. They did so much with mummies. It was ridiculous and kind of disgusting. It's... And really violating in a lot of ways. All right. So you all take care of that situation. and Benjamin uh... convinces the farmer that it was something else. Like, he, like the dude sold him. It was legitimate fertilizer, but it had a few things mixed in that when, once built up after using it for several seasons... It built up and it killed everything. What just happened? Oh, thank you so much for giving those subs. Aww. Thanks, guys. And in the background, like, the camera's gonna have them talking, and in the background, you're just gonna see, like, Henry just punching things, because I have spirit, too, so I can literally, like, punch ghosts. So you're just gonna punching. see Henry just, like... Fist them good, boy! Your father said, your father's ghost says next to you, Fist them uh, good, boy! Fist them like I taught you! But basically, <laughs> Benjamin, make sure that this guy doesn't remember any oddness that he'd noticed of this this was just a scam <laughs> the whole thing like normal science-based scam and okay. while you're talking i feel like edwin goes and like closes the door if they're inside just to be like yeah i'll say that you're running your inside cottage next to as the, we're next talking to the field. <laughs> just kind of like bump the door closed just like yep <laughs> all right so uh we're going Nothing to out of here we're gonna pan back into the actual episode uh so episode title uh, we'll go on the field and you don't need to know the episode title I'll tell you afterwards uh, as well I'll concerning okay um, so as uh, it is oh, fine welcome to the case of the vagabond jewel and uh, as you are riding back into London proper, uh, we're going to do a slow fade in uh, on a little bit of a muck being tossed out the window of the carriage that's finally been able to be scraped off one of your shoes. Um, as well as, I'm assuming that Edith now has like a full cat skeleton in a... Uh, now I realize I didn't I didn't approve I didn't mention before uh, that animal death technically this died like two thousand years ago so I think I, I think that's okay <laughs> I think I think there's a statute of limitations on on content warnings <laughs> like death. that but um, uh, so you may have a mummified cat skeleton that you've retrieved wonderful I thoroughly approve somehow it fits in her bag you're not really uh, sure whether or not it is still animated is is up to the audience and to the fan art. <laughs> um, all right, with that, you are headed into London proper. Um, and as you are doing that, your driver, uh, is your driver a man or a woman? Probably a man. Probably All right. Man. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have so many amazing At names here. I think so. I'm going to let you pick. Is his name uh, Josiah Day, Loyal Withers, or Harley Bat? 
Harley Bat. Harley That's Bat. good. I love Harley Bat. Yeah. That's with two T's. I'll have you Mr. know. Mr. Bat. Mr. Bat. Bat Bot. So Mr. Bat, who is uh, who is a quite a distinguished fellow, um, and is totally an unawakened an unawakened uh, member uh, of your team, will uh, will say that he is. Uh, okay, I'm either thinking, um, you know who he is. He he is. Um, uh, oh God, what's his name? Laszlo. From uh, the oh, what we do in the yes, shadows. You, <laughs> oh, Matt Matt Barry. He's yes, Matt Barry. So you love as Barry. as you come back, he's he's um, he's uh, a slightly overweight man who, uh, in a couple of years, will actually stretch his waistcoat into the territory of Portly, um, with a large mustache that is basically everything but the chin. Uh, but to be fair, his chin does go down a ways, um, <laughs> thanks to that extra, those extra portions of, of dinner and dessert. Uh, and as you approach, he is, uh, I'm not shaming Matt Barry. I'm making him bigger in my head than, than Matt Barry is. Um, as you approach, he is in the process of, of, uh, or as you are riding, he is, um, sitting up front, smoking on his pipe and I say, gentlemen and, and lady, of course, uh, missive for you. Incoming. And inside of the carriage, there is one of those mnemonic tubes. And you're going to hear... <laughs> and a glass tube with, like, gilded silver filigree around the sides, like a little canister, is going to rattle down. It's about the size of a... Uh, about the size of, like, a shaving cream bottle in our day and age. Uh, and it'll rattle... Can I grab it? You absolutely can. It's right next to you. Ah. Hmm. And it's... Hello? Uh, so it is a um, uh, it is a missive from headquarters. By Queen and Country, you are requested to investigate at your nearest convenience or your soonest convenience one missing agent of the Order of Reason, Cal Remington. Mister Calvin Remington has gone without contact. Yeah, pass Please. it over. Uh, anybody here, if you are a member of uh, any of these orders, you can make me an intelligence and politics roll at a difficulty of five. Intelligence politics? Intelligence yeah. politics, yeah. Of oh, just order of reason? Just in order of reason. Okay. I was gonna I was gonna limit it to some of your um, your your blocks, but I think that even even Edith might have heard of this gentleman. Ooh. Sorry, what was the difficulty? Politics, you said, right? Intelligence and politics. All right, what was the difficulty? Five. Five. Okay. Uh, okay. Four and a one, so that's three. Three, three. Everybody's got three. <clears throat> Calvin Remington is an American agent here on uh, on special assignment uh, to bring into cooperation the colonies and the Queen's Order of Reason. He's acting as a bit of a free agent doing uh, investigative work around London. No one is a bit of a freewheeling, free-dealing... Uh, he's called a bit of a cowboy, but he's more of an East Coaster, to be honest. Uh, he's a New York-raised uh, hotshot, uh, played by Tom Cruise in the film, we'll say. Circa, circa 2002, okay? So his Jack Reacher era, I think, maybe a yeah. little bit, 2010. Um, so, you know, he's got that Tom Cruise kind of vibe. Uh, yeah. Uh, quite likable. Uh, Henry, you got five successes? Yes. You are very acquainted with him. Wink. Mm. Mm, I, I, got, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, by the way, uh, you took the, the flaw. Uh, what was your flaw? Old flame. Okay. Uh, I am just going to, if it, unless... You tell me otherwise, every time a new NPC is revealed that oh is God. not specifically stated to be someone you haven't slept with, you may choose yes. to have that be the person you slept with as well, okay? Cool, cool. Does cool. anyone else have any merits or flaws that I need to know of for purposes of, of tomfoolery like that? Possibly. I have two dots in enemy. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I so was going to, but I'm gonna I didn't say, take any. I'm going to say that uh, you might have had some conflict with Remington. He's not necessarily your enemy, but you have had harsh words over Scotch during a billiards match. Mm -hmm, yeah. Where he said something to the tune of, well, where I come from, men cut their hair uh, at a respectable length. And where I come from, we, do, we resolve our issues in with a duel. Outside! Now! Well, okay. 
Uh, so both of you have a scar from that duel, I will say. You may choose where yours is. His is, uh, do you think you winged him in the face or the upper shoulder? Probably upper shoulder. Okay. So he has a body, a body wound that is healed. That was a few months ago. Um, it's, it's actually quite easy to, uh, to have duels with the Order of Reason, since you can just literally patch it up. Uh, Edith. Um, I just want to, I don't know, it, it's similarly applicable, I suppose. I, I did take three dots in the rank background. Okay. So, did anybody else have rank? I have status. Okay. Which is similar. Uh, so, is, yeah. what did you take rank in? Was it rank for the Technocratic Union, or was it for some civilian organization? For, just for civil gentry. Um, oh, just her, yes. I, I imagine her father is, like, someone who's really like a lord or like oh, of, course, of course of course of course of the of, of the buckinghamshire rights of course yes the buckingham rights are the, of course <laughs> yes. of course yes yeah and she's somewhat looked as a, a bit of a kook because she's you know very sciencey and whatnot but for the most part she you know they still they she's still respected as much as a highborn woman would be okay yeah no that sounds fantastic so that will come up you can always do you know who my father is type of thing right yes exactly <laughs> My father, the inventor of toaster strudels, won't be very happy to hear about this. <laughs> my father, the inventor of meatloaf. <laughs> oh my god. The performer, not the meatloaf. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Mr. Calvin Remington has gone missing. Uh, and you should probably go check up on him um, at your nearest convenience. Uh, and at the bottom, there is a just like the Queen's seal, the Order of Reason seal that says, uh, please destroy this missive once you once you have, uh, have found it. You know, we're going to say this is a little bit smaller. We'll say that this is about the size of like, I want to say a toaster strudel now, uh, but say it is about the size of like, like a roll of quarters. I'm assuming that it was delivered via pigeon to this carriage. Obviously. Was, yes, Obviously. Obviously by pigeon. <laughs> um, you're going to see the mention of, of, of Calvin. Um, cause of course, um, Henry is, has, a, you know, slightly the reddish complexion, but very pale. You're going to see his cheeks get a little red at the mention of Calvin. He's going to try and hold it together, but you, you may catch a slight red <laughs> tinge to his cheeks. I feel like Edith is too wondering about, uh, re reading details. Uh, is there any information on the, um, like where he was last seen or anything like that? Uh, so, um, yeah, you know what? I will say, I will say that I will say Henry with five successes, you probably know a little bit. Uh, so, uh, what you know is that he was investigating, uh, manipulation of, uh, aristocrats through underground, uh, gentlemen's clubs. So um, gentlemen's clubs are incredibly predominant in this day and age, uh, as is any type of uh, drinking establishment, uh, gambling establishment, anything like that. However, um, there was a worry that there were um, uh, potentially some illegal trafficking going on, as well as the potential for certain manipulations of powerful figures through um, austere organizations, we'll say. Uh, and he was trying to investigate and and root out these problems. Um, I will say that that is listed there. That's like, you know, was, it's on the back of the sheet. So was on assignment uh, doing uh, investigation work uh, into uh, several strange um, behaviors by members of parliament who had been frequenting um, strange establishments. Now, of course, all of you are also on the Whitechapel murder still. All right. of you are keeping an eye open for that. Uh, that's not going to be in this episode, but um, it is in our main series, so check it out. Um, uh, with that, I will say that it does have like like his last known place of residence, uh, but before you can read it out, Henry, you know where his last place of residence is. Ah, oh, yes. We could probably try uh, 1592 Buckingham Lane, West London. Shire. The Shire. <laughs> you have it memorized. Your friends are dude? Yes, friends. Well, you know, Mr. Butler does have a wonderful memory. It is true. I have an eidetic memory, actually. It is uh, one of my 
why, of course, I was chosen to be part of the order. Um, I, I also want to call Christine out for using, you know, the dude, which I initially balked at and then went back to my history brain and went, yeah, the guy dresses like that. You totally would have called him a dude. Yes. So good, good show. Good show. Plus, plus one fictitious experience point. <laughs> All right. Do you head that direction? Is there any place you'd like to stop along the way? Anything you'd like to do? Get your suits altered, customized, uh, buy any guns, Gatling guns, otherwise, <laughs> like... Um, if, if, uh, so I do have a couple of ranks in Chantry. I don't know if maybe I can like stop by where I like keep some supplies and maybe pick up some additional investigative tools. That sounds good. So, um, that can just be hand waved, we'll but. say that it's on your way there. You can do that. What I will say is make me a, so you're in a bit of a hurry. We'll say a mm -hmm. wits plus Chantry roll. So cool. use your Chantry dots and add those to your wits score. Uh, we'll go against a difficulty of... Six and Krista, don't forget you can always spend willpower points to get an automatic success. Okay, cool. Uh, that's I got two successes. Okay, uh, so what I will say is that you can gain two pieces of TAS. So TAS being being um, quintessence that is in a solid form. Uh, okay. What is your so your chantry is just like a like a is it a row house? Is it like a mansion? It's 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 I only have two points in it, so it's a small mm -hmm. chantry. So yeah, I would imagine it's like a like the the sitting room of of someone's row house so there's you know another awakened member that has like offered up their uh front room to be kind of a space to to store and and do ex min minor experiments and stuff like that so, so i will say in. that you have two immaculately conceived tea biscuits perfect that just always appear when your place wells up with quintessence enough they just appear as tea biscuits or cups of tea I like the tea biscuits. I like that idea. That's very It's more good. transportable than the tea, right? You and I'm sorry, what were they called? It's tass. So it's just tass. tass. Uh, what that means is if you consume it, you will gain a point of quintessence. Uh, you'll gotcha. also gain whatever resonance is on there. It leaves you like an emotional vibe. Uh, the vibe for this is, hmm. <laughs> I was gonna... <laughs> That's hmm, exactly yes. correct, yes. <laughs> it's, it's comfortable, uh, comfortable, cozy core. Wonderful. Uh, it's uh, she'll... Cozy core. Awesome. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, she'll she'll walk in, she'll uh, uh, pull out a little handkerchief and grab a couple of the biscuits and wrap them up and put them in her bag and Great. pop you back out. You can also grab whatever other equipment that you need. Uh, also, players, if you did not do so, because I didn't remind you, you have your avatar rating in Quintessence. Yes. So you may no. add that to your sheet. Um, and when I say plus one XP, just gain a Quintessence because that that that's that's fair. It's a one shot. I don't care. Okay. So, Christine. Do I have for, one quintessence from that earlier? You and Christine have plus one each. Excellent. Nice. For making me All laugh. All right. So, we need to, we need to, okay, we need to try. Yeah, All right. well, I should, pick it I, up. We gotta pick it up. I, I shouldn't run this after I play in a they came from game because now I'm just <laughs> all about quips. I'm just turning this into the, ne the nevers. Which, honestly, not a bad show. Aside from okay. who runs it. Um, all right. So grabbing a few things from your place, you can also grab whatever other equipment you may need. Uh, and with that, uh, you start heading out that direction. Now, the place that uh, he was staying um, is, is it an apartment or a row house, Henry? It is a row house. Okay, so he has an entire row house to himself. And as you clip, 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 oh, I got stuck on that for some reason, sorry. As you clip clop your way through town, the sound of your horse uh, making its way uh, downtown, walking fast. Uh, the streets are lined with abject filth as they should be uh, in this day and age. Uh, you'll hear at the front, uh, Mr. Bat say, out of the way, you puppet. Stop getting in front of the horses. They'll squish you to ribbons or bits or Ah, damned urchins. Everything okay up there, Bat? Uh, yes, sir. Just the the children again. They seem magnetized to the horse's hooves. Perhaps a science paper there for you? Yes, good but, show, Mr. Bat. Good show. <laughs> too bad I can't whip them. Too bad. Guess I'll stick to the horses. <laughs> Nay! What did he say, Nay? <laughs> he said Nay. Or is that the horses? 
The horses nay, are just, nay. you know, yeah, no. you know what it is. He's just an angler fish, and the horses are his little lights. Okay. <laughs> this is the best idea for a monster ever. <laughs> Hop into the carriage, please. <laughs> it's not lined with fangs. Damn, that should have been the game. The whole thing is a carriage going around picking people up, like a Johnny Cab, and just Next like time. it eats people. Oh. Next time, right handsome now. Handsome cab. Handsome cab, yeah. Yeah, Johnny Cab is from Total Recall. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Mr. Bat That's will... ridiculous. Mr. Bat will take you to the location there. Uh, and uh, with a bit of levity, uh, you are going to make your way over toward the... Uh, would you say one, two, three, four, five Buckinghamshire Ford... Road. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, that was Perfect. it. Totally. Okay. As you approach, you can see that it is quite a, an ostentatious row house. It's um, newly crafted within the last uh, probably uh, probably twenty years or so, but is very very well maintained. Despite the rest of the city being choked with coal dust that makes you want to gag the moment that you step out of the carriage, this place is clean. Even a block before. The outsides of the houses, their facades were blackened by soot. But here, this set of row houses is immaculately cleaned. The amount of wealth that portrays uh, and, and displays to the populace is not lost. And as you approach, um, you can see that there is... Um, there is a single light on inside. Um, uh, I suppose, yeah, his housekeepers would still be here, would they not? Uh, potentially. He usually has them out past a certain point. As you approach the front door, um, Mr. Bat says, I'll wait here. And he goes into <laughs> standby mode. Because he's probably right. He's probably a robot. Totally a construct. <laughs> um, now, quick question, Kelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because I've never, I've not familiar is a uh, correspondence, but that is yes. like sensing. Like I can scry and correspondence stuff. allows you to scry. It allows you to touch things at range. Uh, it can okay. also make you a much better aim or fist fighter because oh, your shots okay. won't miss. Ah, okay. Um, um, in a similar vein, um, I have Prime. Yes. Um, is it possible to like sense if there's been... Magic specifically. So um, yeah. So Prime 1 would be finding magic in motion. You'd be able to basically see like active verb sense of magic. Okay. Uh, to, to look into previous events of magic or to detect traces, usually you would use whatever sphere is attached to it. Um, however, okay. with uh, what level of prime do you have? You three. Have three. So you are the canon of the group, as it turns out. Uh, at prime uh, three. So prime three, forces three, matter two. <laughs> so what you can do, and what I'll say you can do for background if you want to, for every point of quintessence that you spend mm -hmm. uh, retroactively, I will let you have one charm on your sheet that basically is a pre done spell that you cast. Because at okay. prime two and three, you can basically make potions. Oh, so okay. any any spell you can cast, for example, if you want one that's like, ah, yes, this imbues things with with quintessence. And so this knife does aggravated damage. Now, if I yeah. pour this holy water on it, you can just have yeah. that in your pocket. It means the spell's already been cast. So you don't have to roll dice to make it work. Cool. Um, so um, and because this is a one shot, I'll let you retroactively say, oh, I made a charm for that. And it is this. She probably has like a little brooch that she wears mm -hmm. that is kind of like a bit of an EMP, but like just like a forces to like get people away from her. So if she ever gets like attacked. Okay, so a, street, telekine a telekinetic thing. Okay. A telekinetic boost. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. mark one point of quintessence off your sheet. Okay. And then and I have the two little dudes. You have the right? two tasks. And you can okay. you can you can retroactively spend those two if you want any more. No, that's okay. I only had the one, so okay. um I'll keep the other two. You might as well hold on to. Sounds good. So we'll just say that happen. Um, Anybody else who has prime two can have that happen as well if you really want. It's all good. Um, okay. But so I, I don't sense anything. So, uh, in here. if you, so turning on, you know what I'll say for basic sites, let's not roll unless it's going to be a, like 
a yes or no situation, like really infect the plot. Sure. So quickly, just cycling on your prime senses, you will glance around and there's no active magic aside from what you're carrying with you. You'll see that there is a slight hum at the brooch as it actively is full of quintessence, uh, as well as the tass uh, cookies in your pocket are going to be kind of vibrating there. You'll be able to feel them on an, on that etheric wavelength. Um, does anyone else have any active magic? I think I'd like to look around with some entropy to see if someone's gone missing. See if and I would like to try to, like, see into the apartment because I have co correspondence three. Sounds good. So I was going to use mind. Okay, so uh, why don't we go through these individually, and what I'll do is I'll find out what you're doing, find out how you're doing it, give you a difficulty, tell you to roll, switch to the next person, and then we'll resolve them all in order after the rolls have been done. So, Amy, you said first, so I need to know, are you using this to basically, like, make you a better detective? Are you doing this to, how are you using entropy in this case? Um, someone who has never used entropy before and, and mage. So, um, so for, for chance and things like that, you could look for weaknesses, you could look for, for changes in probability or disorder, you could look for, you could detect lies if someone was speaking, you could also right. use it just to make you luckier. You just yeah, probably to do that. The right yeah. thing. Okay, just that sounds good. luckier in all this. So here's what Not I want the most from observant. you. You're going to be rolling a difficulty three. Okay. You want as many successes as you can. All right, and just rolled okay. my arete and... Sounds good. I'm okay. going to hop over to Henry. Henry, uh, so go ahead and roll. Henry, you are doing correspondence too, so how are you looking into this place? Do you have like a scope, like a tele tele telescope? Do you have... Um, just check into a mirror? Do you kind yeah, of like look at Yeah, I think he has angles? like a pocket. I think he has like a, a pocket, um, a pocket mirror that he will use and kind of like bounce bounce it off of like windows basically finding the perfect angle to tilt the mirror to like bounce off of windows to see into the place okay sounds good so what you're gonna do is you're gonna do correspondence two at a difficulty of four uh so that's your arite roll difficulty four uh and you're basically wanting like one success um the more successes you'll get the better look you get on this uh benjamin you are doing mind are you just trying to detect mines in your area hot single mines in your area <laughs> Sorry, I caught um, you in the middle of a bite, didn't I? I was thinking of trying to A, see if there's anybody in the space. Okay. So I was kind of trying to not so much the relative area, but kind of like a tight area. So with Wait. with with non-correspondence related spheres, unless you do a conjunctional effect, you can only detect inside of perceptive perception range. Okay. So right now, standing outside of the house, like the door's not even open, you're not going to get too much. Um, however, if you put on mind sense, basically the moment that you would get any sensory feedback, like you you step on the same floor they are and their vibration would reach them, uh, you could hear them, you could smell them. You will be able okay. to detect like any anytime a sense could reasonably be re reach you, your mind would work. Oh, OK. Does that sound like something you want to do? No, I'll wait. Okay. All right, so uh, going through it, Amy, you got two successes, so that is going... I'm just going to say that it's going to last for the scene to make life easy. So you'll be at a minus two on all investigation checks for the scene to look for things that are out of place or strange. Um, uh, Henry, what did you get? I got two successes. Okay. So this is going to be probably, if you communicate this, this is probably going to be where Benjamin like d turns this thing on. Um, as you like look in your mirror you will get a nice like the camera will kind of zoom in on your mirror and then bounce back through the front window go through the front window the sitting room down the hall take a left into the study where you will see two bodies on the floor and a not an insignificant amount of blood do any of the bodies look familiar what i recognize you will recognize two people immediately uh one of them uh well you'll recognize one and a half um uh, one of them is absolutely uh mr calvin remington uh his throat has been cut and he is lying face down in a pool of his own blood um nearby is a woman who is also face down she looks very familiar but until you roll her over you you're you're paying more attention to the guys this month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
And as you're doing this, Edwin, you turn on Entropy Sight, look around, and you're going to notice one thing in particular. The moment you look at the front door, you'll see that there are splinters sticking out from behind the doorknob. Strange. Henry. Oh, Calvin. What? Did you see something, Henry? Mr. But Mr. Butler's. We're too late. He's been murdered. And he'll look into the camera when he says murdered. <laughs> the camera will look into you as well. <laughs> A single tear will go down his face. Oh my goodness, should we not get inside then? Oh, Alan. we should most definitely need to get inside. We need to... We, we could speak to the bodies. We could find out what happened. We could venge could kill and find out who murdered Mr. Remington. I will find out. Right. Well, there is a potential sign of break and entering. If you look at the door there. Oh. Uh, try the door. Uh, the door is stuck fast. Hmm. It is. It as you approach it, it. Edwin was stating what appears to be very obvious when you get close. Um, something of massive strength struck this solid wood door and splintered it in about the size of a sledge, a fist, quite a large, about a softball sized hole in it, probably a croquet ball sized. Um, and you'll actually see that on the sides, the, the hinges are visible. Edwin, oh. looking at this, you're going to get the sense that whatever struck this struck hard enough that the hinge metal snapped. The door is Ew. wedged shut, though. Hmm. We may need to look for another way in. But, well, just well, one moment. Um, she's going to rummage around in her bag and pull out um, something that kind of looks like almost like one of those um like the bolts uh that are like hydraulic bolts mm -hmm. um except it's got a pull back that clicks and then press a button and it pops forward with like springs and stuff okay. um but she's going to use that to um use forces sure. to just pop this thing off of like just Pumps the door in. Sounds great to me. Uh, the forces three will rip this thing off its hinges. What? Perfect. So give me difficulty of give me difficulty five on this. Five. Nine. Ooh, and a ten. So that'll re-roll. And a ten. Okay. Yeah. Keep going until it stops. <laughs> and a ten. Uh, and a nine. So four successes. On four successes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're going to clip that in and start like doing like cranking it or whatever you need or pulling it. Uh, so you're going to hear this horrible high pitched noise just as the hydraulic goes through. And that is it, is it like a pinball plunger. I was going to say it's like a pin pinball plus plunger that like you pull it back until it clicks. And then there's a trigger that lets it go. So, so it's not actually hydraulic. It's 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 more spring loaded. So you're going to hear as it slams home and the door is going to go and a huge cloud of actually not dust, but sawdust will pop up um, revealing that there is in the distance, a gas lantern um, or a gas, a gas light, I suppose um, an oil lamp. That's what I mean. Uh, Don't that, think we need to worry about the other entrance. Clearly. Um, all right, Benjamin, you haven't been able to do anything yet. W would you like to do anything? Um, I think everybody's got it covered, so. Okay. Sounds good. Who is the mm -hmm. first one into the flat? I'm guessing Henry probably is a little concerned, so I think he might be one of the first people in the door. Okay, sounds good. Now, Christine, you're not using mind magic very often, so there are a couple of different mind things that you could do that are pretty cool. Uh, mm -hmm. One, when the time comes, you can do resonance checks on things. So things leave emotional stains on locations. Time okay. magic makes this more useful, but if something is very recent and fresh, uh, think of like ghost rules, right? Like, oh, tragic death here. Uh, um, you could use mind to like try to find psychic fingerprints. 
Okay. On things that would be effective. Uh, I don't think you have time magic, so it it will be like more of a hunch than like a mm -hmm. definite. But you could absolutely do that. Um, you could uh, use it to search for hiding individual with that, with that, with that mind sight. Uh, there are a mm -hmm. lot of things you could do. You could also set up a mind shield on yourself, which I'm not going to say that I recommend, but I recommend it. Um, okay. So uh, what I will do is uh, you head inside. Now, the hallway in front of you is quite tight. Past the foyer. Yeah, we're in England to be a foyer, not a foyer. Um Past the foyer, there is, you take a left into a sitting room, or you head up a breakneck staircase of steep steps on the right. If you move straight ahead of the stairwell, though, you will see that there is a kitchen at the back and a left turn down a side hallway that leads to the reading room or study. As you turn the corner, a harsh shadow envelops you, for there is an oil lamp that lays on the floor. Now, the woman has fallen just inside of the door to the study. And this oil lamp looks like it has rolled out of her grip. The oil is pooling on the floor presently. The, the wick still somehow lit. So there is a big puddle of oil on the floor in front of you from where the reservoir has cracked from the fall. Um, but you can head right into the murder scene if you'd like. Anyone else going with? I think I'll... Edwin will follow along behind. Okay. Everybody else? Uh, yeah, um... Edith will hike her skirt up and step over everything and <laughs> walk her way in. Now, is this oil lamp lit? The oil lamp is still lit. The wick is still up, and uh, as you are glancing down, you will see that the wick is slowly drooping toward the puddle of oil. And this house will go up like a tinderbox. Uh, Benjamin is going to control that. Okay. So try and just put it out, essentially. You may easily do so. Um, and as you are squatting down there amidst all of that, uh, I want you to do me a favor. Uh, okay. Make me a perception and investigation roll. You may also use alertness if you wish. All right, so... Um, investigation's fine. Sounds good. Uh, what's the difficulty? Difficulty on this is going to be six, because you're just right next to it. Uh, three successes. Three successes. You're going to see a couple of things right away. Uh, the first is, as you squat down to, to do the oil lamp, right next to the trim of the hallway, uh, you will see there is a bullet embedded in the wood of the floor. And glancing up behind you, there are a couple of more bullets embedded where the hallway kind of T-sections near the stairwell. Hmm. All right. Since I bent over to do this, I'm going to then kind of like pivot to look at the stuff. And the way he's posed, you've got to imagine Horatio Kane crouched down next to the crime scene. Okay. <laughs> All right, do it. <laughs> he's going to look around and he's going to whip out a pair of glasses and put them on. Normal glasses, not sunglasses. Why? Just oh, right my. out of his pocket. I don't have any, so. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You're going to have to I, imagine I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm your, oh, do you have a line? I no, I haven't thought of any. There we go. It looks like we're hot on the trail. No, no, no. I got it. I got oh. it. I got it. I sent. I sent him his ghostwritten line. Now, if I could stop laughing for a minute. Looks like he bit the bullet. There we. There we go. Um, and as well as you are glancing down there, you're going to be right there and preserved in the oil. Um, would have been really easy to miss, but I'm going to say that oil and dirt clump together when they mix, right? Yeah. Sure, they do. They do. They do in, in this world. Um, I mean, like, if it's oil on the floor, like, dirt will stick to it, I think. So you are going to see that there is a slightly preserved half footprint in the floor. So it looks mm. like the attacker left afterwards leaving a quite a footprint 
uh, behind. Uh, I would say that the, a man's shoe, I know they weren't sized back then in the same way, uh, but I would say it's like a size 13. That was fairly large, right? I'm a size Huge. 10 to 11 usually. Oh, okay. So yeah, so 13 is, is basketball player and up. Yeah. So quite a large boot print on the ground that would not mm. have been preserved had the oil lamp not shattered. It's convenient. I'll call out to the others that were potentially looking for somebody with big feet. Okay. Large fellow. Uh, inside of the room as you approach uh, what is everyone doing? So you have uh, directly inside of the door there is a woman who is face down on the ground uh, she is looks quite well to do. Uh, a woman of station dressed in a vest with a high ruffled neck um, her sleeves are are um, um, she has a full a full length a full length blouse I'm going to say that with that ends in slightly ruffled sleeves as well as, well as doe skin gloves uh, a set of quite high like thigh high boots underneath her dress which is more of a riding dress than anything she's seems like she's a bit well to do um has quite a, a fancy pocket watch uh and her handbag that she was carrying has kind of spilled on the ground next to her uh dropping a few things out such as a small derringer pistol um about 15 feet in front of her is where you see Calvin Remington uh, on his on his stomach. He is surrounded by a pool of blood, about about a liter or two worth only, um, which is kind of rough because there are places on the wall where there's arterial spray redecorating the wallpaper. Um, directly opposite the door is a fireplace that is sprayed with the stuff. Um, if you had to guess, someone's... Well, you know what? I'll, that's what investigation rolls are for. Uh, the wall behind the fireplace is sprayed with blood. There are several broken uh, pictures. Uh, there are quite a few broken pieces of furniture. Uh, and on the ground, it looks like there's something that has been scrawled in blood. Now, what would you like to do to investigate this scene? We switch to investigation mode. <laughs> I would like to speak to ghosts. <laughs> oh, damn. That will work too. So, we'll let me let me ask Krista first cuz she started, but then we'll get to ghosts. Yeah, honestly, it's not going to matter if we talk to ghosts, so go ahead and talk to ghosts. Okay. Well, what what were you thinking? I want to know. Well, I was going to just look around the room and see if I could find like if if someone was like see, like if there was a theft. Okay. Of some kind. All right. So, or an attempted uh, theft. So make me a an intelligence and investigation roll. And Mr. Blythe, what are you thinking? Yes, Edwin would like to also investigate and maybe try and identify who this woman is. Absolutely. Make me an intelligence and investigation roll. Difficulty of four. Okay. To investigate or the what woman. What was my difficulty again? Six. six. So unless okay. I give you a difficulty, assume it's six. It's six. Okay. But Edwin is good at looking for clues. Uh, Henry, please do me a favor for ghost sight and speech. Uh, we'll say it's a combined effect, so it'll be a difficulty of, we'll say five. And well, all you yeah, need is dirt. Yeah, because it's just a, like, that is like a level two. It's using court or spirit two. Yeah. Can I actually, yeah. Okay, so I've got two successes and five successes. Uh, so, Edith, glancing around the room, you don't believe that anything was stolen specifically. Um, like looking around, like you'll see that it looks like he was standing there. There's still like a broken glass of sherry on the mantel. Mm -hmm. So the sound probably caught him off guard. There's an open drawer nearby mm -hmm. with a bunch of bullets in it, probably where he kept one of his guns. Okay. Front door got kicked open. He probably ran over, grabbed his gun. This door is wide open. In fact, so wide open as you glance at it, whoever opened this door kicked it so hard it swung and embedded its handle in the wall holding mm. it open permanently uh probably okay. whoever this was rushed in um and nearby underneath a chair you will see that there is a um uh, a colt peacemaker pistol okay so that it seems like this was a hit yeah not a this I'm is not a theft this was so absolutely a hit Interesting. Um, okay. All right. Zooming out to Edwin Blythe, because uh, the, the spirit's going to take a minute. Um, Mr. Blythe, looking around, you will see, you'll get a sense that, yeah, okay, this was obviously a murder. 
on the ground next to uh, to Mr. Remington, you will see the word jewel has been written in his own blood. The L barely visible in the viscous fluid. Um, you will see as well, his throat is completely torn so much that were you to prop him up, he would probably have his head flop back like an apple that's been cored. Ew, gruesome. Looking around as well, you are going to see that there are there is a great display of strength here. Um, the the cut is super clean on his throat, so much so that you think it might have been done with a straight razor or a surgical knife of some type, but it is so deep. The amount of strength it would have taken to do that is beyond. Like, that would have to be like a freak accident of like a, an iron tether line snapping or something like that. Like, can you imagine putting something the size of a razor blade through a piece of wood? Because that's basically what happened here. Well, that's concerning. And I don't see a razor blade or a surgical knife around here, do I? You do not. You do not. Um, okay. So you're going to look at that. Then glancing down at the woman, uh, you are going to notice that unlike Mr. Uh, uh, unlike Mr. Remington, she is breathing. <gasps> oh. Should have looked. <laughs> uh, well, she. Well, the lady may be alive. Oh goodness. Do um. You, do you check her? Yeah, I have one point in medicine. Okay, sure. so rolling her over, you will recognize her as Miss Madeline Rule. Madeline Rule is, uh, one of the Order of Reasons money pennies, basically. Who? It is her job to basically like handle agents to to be a girl Friday to the higher ups. Right. So what what was her name? Uh so it is Madeline Rule. Okay. Because that is the best name ever. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Right? I was like I was going to she's going to eventually going to be quite a big bad if she survives this. For well mm-hmm. for me. She's going to be a big good for the technocracy. Uh, so rolling her over and giving her a quick check over with investigation five, uh, you are going to see that uh, she has quite the goose egg on her forehead. It looked like, it, yes, what were you asking? Oh, I don't know if it makes a difference, but one of those successes was actually a 10. Does that end up as two? Uh, so or not are we rolling unle- them in this game? You re you have a specialty. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so glancing over at her, what I will say is that you, um, you will see that she is unconscious. Uh, you can try to wake her. You have smelling salts in your pocket because it's the Victorian age. Of course. I'll definitely try to wake her. Okay, so she will flicker her eyes. At... Oh. Oh, my head. Oh. oh easy. Um, well, Mr. there... Mr. Blythe. There's been a murder. And oh no. He'll just point over at the dead body. Uh, let me make a faint roll for her one second. Oh no. She does not faint. She, oh. she squeaks. Um, <laughs> and Henry, how do you set up summoning ghosts? Um, I think how Henry does um, probably gives um, there's like some sort of like gadgets and gizmos that the technocracy or order of reasons probably made that like mm. basically is like almost like using magnets and like different angles so he sets up to have certain lights in the he turns on different gas lights in the room to like bounce through lenses to basically like make this almost like almost like a salt like summoning circle but he's using it with like science. Oh, but it's science because he's using lenses and and lights and bouncing the light to kind of around him to then do that. And then he just starts, um, how would he summon through the gate? I guess he basically uses time, like almost like the certain hours on the clock, like, okay, it's three past. Okay. I'll start saying this thing to kind of, this is when scientifically the moon is at the lowest peak kind of thing of course for, for, for harmonic resonance conversion yes oh yeah he probably like has like a like as well like you know like the the, the tuning fork and he probably goes ting. 
as you kind of as you do that sounds good to me so doing this that, is the height of occultism in it is England, and so. the technocracy oh, yeah. is not super scientific at this point so you yeah. can blend a little bit of that in okay cool. cool um so like i mean like look at sir arthur conan doyle was an av avid spiritualist almost yeah. bankrupt himself from it and wrote all of Sherlock Holmes, so well, most of it. Some of it. I there. mean, they did a ton of work at trying to get ghosts on camera too. Yeah, because yeah. the Corellian there's a lot of falsifying, but there's episode. a reason I took almost as many dots in occult as I did in science. The, um, <laughs> I, I did the same, actually. Yeah. I took as many dots in occult. The and podcast science. criminal has a great one about the uh, the camera stuff. Is is there a like help action in this kind of thing? Like, can you like co cast? So yes, if you have the same the same spheres. Oh, okay. So this would be spirit. This would be spirit. So okay, Henry, okay. you can cast this if you want to ask for help from someone else with spirit. Henry, you can. So or you can just do it yourself. Have spirit. Anyone else have spirit? Uh, no, uh, I was just gonna for color because you were saying you use like gas lamps and stuff like that. I was mm -hmm. gonna say Edith might say, "Oh well, hang on one moment." Let's you get may that. absolutely we'll try to. So the the basic standard rule is you need the sphere, but so long as you're working in concert to help set up the focus, you have the same paradigm and belief system roughly. So sure, you may roll. Uh, so what I want you to do, Edith, is roll first. Just make okay. me an arete roll to basically help. Okay. And. What this will do is you'll count as basically uh, an additional tool or focus. One. Fine, cool. So, Henry, please make this roll at difficulty three now. Sweet. Great. Uh, yeah, Edith will pull out um, some like little like light bulbs mm -hmm. um, and and have a little hand generator that she's creating electricity with. Now, Henry, do you have prime? I do not. Okay. See, if you had spirit and prime together, you could make the ghost physically manifest. Into like no, I have shape. Prime. <laughs> um, but what I can say is if you want to with with spirit too, I'll say that you can it can be enough for you to make him manifest to be able to speak to everyone if you want. Or you sure, can just keep yeah. it all to yourself if you prefer. No, no, I think he's gonna try and share it to the group as well. So cause he's like maybe a tiny bit like a little bit distracted emotionally, so he's like maybe they will also hear some other stuff. Um so yeah, no, he's going to do that and i got three successes and actually that th one of them was a three so krista you actually got me an extra yes. success for that so thank you nice. teamwork. Awesome. <laughs> Dream, teamwork something something dream work yeah <laughs> okay so um mr butlers um you are going to set up your things and uh with with in just a moment the air is going to crackle with strange phenomenon and nearby a phonograph is going to click off its its stand and start <laughs> as it plays around on a um uh, on the uh the the pressed i guess record we'll say record but whatever phonograph uh music is inside of there will start playing uh which let me find something one second do, do, do. <laughs> music I have been using that one too often here we go <laughs> some music will begin playing in the room uh, and you will recognize this that it has been from a recent a recent uh, encounter that you had was drinking brandy uh, and sharing some some heat on a chill autumn evening to this violin music <laughs> and in front of all of you next to the fireplace you will see the ethereal form of Mr. Calvin Remington just coalesce into translucence or partial lucence I should say he'll look down at his body well shit What happened, Calvin? Hello, Henry. The right strong bastard kicked in the door, came at me. I tried to leave you a message, but I guess this is easy enough. You caught me just at the right time, kid. I uh, was just about to catch the express out of here. White lights and all that. There's something strange going down at the Vagabond Jewel. 
It's an old prison hulk down in the harbor. It's been converted into some type of gambling den. They got people coming in and out all the time, mostly mostly from outside of the country. Chinese, Indians, a lot of people that the regular Brits over here aren't going to pay much attention to. Especially if they go missing. Some big lug caught... Oh, that's a little bit out of date. One sec. Some, I'm in the 20s by accident, huh? Some big lug. Some big fella caught me looking. Big guy. British, pale, slooping, slooping brow line, shaved head. I don't think that the boat's going to be in town for much longer. And I know that there's some type of game there tonight. So, uh... How's your pharaoh hand? I'd say it's pretty... Pretty decent. Well, they've also got Baccarat if you need to back onto that. But as for me, I guess it's, well, curtains. I wish I was seeing you on better circumstances, Calvin. <laughs> what can I say? I'm in good spirits. May you find the company of many up there, wherever you are going. Whatever is on the other side. I appreciate it. I'll do my best. I'll, uh, be sure to shake some hands of some angels for you. I'd appreciate it. You're a good man, and a good... Friend. friend. But what, Henry? There. And he starts to fade away. Oh, one more thing. Butters, friends. Please get the son of a bitch for me language. Son of, of a gun. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I suppose we have our next place to look. If, if he was investigating this vagabond jewel and, and the ruffians aboard it, uh, perhaps uh, it was one of them that wanted to take him out before he had any opportunity to shut them down. It sounds like the fellow will be fairly noticeable to find. Don't find too many bold f gentlemen around. Not of that size. Mm -mm. I could kick the door into the wall or leave such big footprints yes you're right well how well, do you be interested fancy to find out cards what he's protecting mm -hmm. um miss rule uh, yes uh when did you come in here did you come I... across mr remington or were you here before i came in sh just a bit a while ago um, uh, the front door was large so i picked the back lock I, I I suppose that Mr. Remington won't mind. That's very resourceful of you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I came down the hallway and, and saw this. Um, and I, I suppose all the blood was just a bit much. I fainted. Completely understandable, ma'am. He was asking, um, Mr. Remington was asking I do a bit of research for him regarding the, the Vagabond Jewel. Um, hmm. What I was able to find may be of use to you. Um, it appears the ship's uh, dockyard manifest is registered to one Miss... Um, she shoots a glance at the gentleman present. Fanny Lane. Do I know who that is? Well, it literally means Pussy Street. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so it's a good, good question. It's, it's, I, I do believe it's a pseudonym. Um... <laughs> I did a bit of investigation work on my own um, and discovered, for sake of time, um, that... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a, a one-shot. 
fair. Um, okay. Uh, did find that um, the name Fanny Lane has been used several times by a career criminal. Um, one of um, I believe mixed stock um, uh, a, a Milano import uh, named Luetta Desmond. Apparently, Miss Desmond is quite well known inside of the criminal circuit. Uh, anybody here have Streetwise? I do. Nice. Okay, so give me uh, an intelligence and Streetwise roll. I do as well. Nice, both of you. Yeah. Give it to me. Difficulty six. You have the name. You have the... It should be fine. Three successes. Three successes? Two. Two successes. Okay, so uh, now what form of Streetwise are you most commonly knowledgeable about? Just so I can flavor it. Is there anything in particular or just general? I'd say, like, I didn't try and specialize it because I don't have a specialization. So. Sounds, sounds yeah. fair. Uh, so um, what I will say is that you have neither of you have had a conversation with Luetta Desmond. You know, do know that Luetta Desmond um, is... Uh, she's part Italian. Um, you know that she's apparently quite fetching, uh, fairly, fairly like swarthy complexion, uh, brown hair bordering on black is quite the looker, um, has, uh, made a fortune, uh, throughout her time, uh, black widowing, uh, wealthy men. Uh, and she also has done, um, a bit of rumored, uh, opium and uh, uh, trafficking of human variety, um, which of course has been illegal in in Britain for longer than any of you have been alive. Uh, so any type of of human servitude is very illegal here, uh, and punishable by a lot. Hopefully, actually, don't know the punishment. Should have looked that up. Um, but what you will also know is. Um, Luet is a strange case because she appears to have been doing this grift for quite a while. Like 30 years or more. There's a story of like uh, of a low level uh, let's see what's the lowest I guess just a lord that she managed to seduce a, uh, a lord hall that left her most of his estate back in the 50s and it's the early 19 or 1890s right now so i mean maybe she ages like judy dench or maybe it's a dread pirate robert situation true yeah definitely uh and um specifically um henry you got one extra success uh so you will know that she also employs the um the the services of a immense Irishman named Barry O'Neill, uh, spelled like the fruit. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm like, what do you mean O'Neill? Well, what's an O'Neill fruit? fruit? I yeah. did the exact same thing. Thank you, Chris. Because <laughs> I was like, what's an O'Neill fruit? No, Barry. Um, <laughs> I'm stupid. Yeah. <laughs> So Luetta Desmond has had uh, significant run-ins with uh, the British Mafia as okay. well, and appears to have ties to Sicily. Hmm. Which is just starting to really start, like, getting its its feet digging in around the world now. Looks like this, uh... She's got a bit of a... a taste for the criminal, this... Desmond. Yes, you know. Yeah, she has ties with the uh, Sicily, London. She's quite known for trafficking. Definitely a slippery woman. Mm. Oh, terribly unladylike. So we're thinking that either there's a lot of them passing it on and on and on or there's something unsavorly magical happening happening yes, yes. that was my thought potentially i suppose if she was quite young when she married um not uncommon um perhaps it was but i well yes and, hmm 
Well, we know what those magical types like to get involved in. Yes. Mm. I think we bring some order, don't you say, gentlemen, yes, ladies? Um, I suppose we should go uh, uh, get dressed for our party. All right. And that sounds like a great place to segue over to you getting ready and heading out. Uh, now, quick note. Does anybody need to use the washroom or anything while we do this? Because we're going to be in a sprint <laughs> after this. So, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I think so. A quick, really quick, quick break. washroom break. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing, Krista? You haven't played much mage. It's pretty It's pretty easy if it, if you just go through it casual, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's definitely like it's it's very um, it's relatively intuitive. It's just, you know, do the thing, thing to do, <laughs> thing to do, thing to do, do the do Mountain Dew. Um, Mountain Dew. All right. Are we good to go or you can? I'm just going <laughs> to keep. OK, I'm just just gonna gonna keep, so we're not sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Do. I'm just going to keep chatting. So, uh, <laughs> folks, thanks. Krista, if you need to go to, I'll just chat with the I'm chat good. if you want. Um, I'll cut this out of the the final. Uh, so cut <laughs> break. Uh, 122. So hey folks, thank you so much for tuning in to Onyx PathCon. Uh, if you are enjoying what we do here, be sure to check out Onyx Path and all of its great products because they, they, they do good books. And I don't just say that because I write for them. Uh, <laughs> but I definitely suggest you should get some books from the Aberrant line soon for no particular reason. Mm. Perhaps a new one that's dropping. It's in a, a very months. fun game. I've played it. It's very mm -hmm. good. It's very You know delightful. what it needs? It needs better villains. Mm, yes. Right? We, you know, sometimes it's hard to do supervillains. Only only certain people can do really good ones. You should definitely do supervillains, especially ones <laughs> that like people dared you to make a scary version of. And then you're like, <laughs> fine, if they made yeah. Polka Dot Man scary, then hey, uh, yeah. you know, maybe somebody could. Purple it, you Man, know, Polka Dot Man. Or the purple yeah, the purple man turned out to be quite scary. Uh but yeah. I hope you're enjoying this. It's a little the tone's a bit lighter than a normal game, but it's oh, hey Robin, pants make it much easier, don't they? I guess you don't what? wear pants. You wear pants in day-to-day -day life. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talk about my speed <laughs> coming back. That was pretty quick. That was pretty quick. Uh, Y'all having fun? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lots of fun. I cool. will probably will be eating pizza during the next game because I am hungry. <laughs> that is totally, totally fine. Um, I think do. we I think we can probably finish this in about 45. Um, okay. So, so long as Amy doesn't get lost because I know her bathroom is like a mile away from her streaming room. <laughs> it's true. The fact she has a screen. I, I love this mind. this look. I'm not gonna lie. It's quite You just cute. need you need a little little more a little more contouring around the chin, I think. You need to pop that thing. Yeah, I know. You need to cavil it up. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I found it funny that you went fast bender because I was fully thinking cavil. So I thought cavil too, but then Robin was like, oh, a little more svelte, a little more That's trim. Fair. And I'm like, that's not what you, I will say we were out the other day at a local like bougie bakery, like a real, like an upscale bakery. <laughs> and this baker walked through and he was like six, four with a mustache. And he looked like he was Henry Cavill's cousin. And Amazing. I was just like, hi, hi, <laughs> I, I'm straight, but I can learn. <laughs> Enough heat will bend to anything. <laughs> oh. oh, that's good. That's good. Krista. Between iron and spaghetti. <laughs> we got to find your, your your point there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, if also, anybody has well, thank you gosh. everyone for following in all of the subs and all of the awesome. Professor Multiverse, you're killing it in the memes again. I just saw oh, the recent you? one. Okay, I'm going to take a quick moment if, to look uh, at the memes. If you're not then... in our door, if you're not in our Discord, join it. Yes. Okay. Uh, by the okay, way, if you're looking at memes, I lied. I do have to pee. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, go pee. If you can do. So. Th I just sent a message to our mage chat for this game because it's what was typed in. I don't remember what I was saying, but I, I had I you if you can do mad sorbet. What? I, I don't know. I think I was I was texting something and I think autocorrect took over. Autocorrect, take the wheel. <laughs> I can't so, do mad sorbet. I don't know. I, you, I, I can't. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm gonna sorry. Check these, I'm going to check these memes, then we're going to head back in the game. Um, so, I was heading downstairs, and I've done something to my right leg. Like, my knee is just doesn't want a knee. Ow. Knee, That's knee, a problem. Knee, knee, knee. Yeah. So what is it? Weird. It's in broadcast spoilers. Okay, hold on. I'm going to see. Um... How high up? Okay, that's the horse from the other night. 
Uh, knowing that she is the elf queen gives me yeah, as cute. Okay. Boblin. Do, do, do. If it's not the same species, yep, okay, I'm on board. There won't be. Oh, that's cute. I like that. I like that. That's great in the Wild West America. That's great. Wow, that's gr that Professor Multiverse. The that one is perhaps the best. That one's yep. amazing. So I will get that super close. Wow, how'd you get like that? Every time historians say that a gay couple were just good friends or roommates, I do one push up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's, that's super good. Oh, the camera worked. Uh, players, how are you not dead? Miss Madeline Rule. I have no idea. <laughs> Science. Yeah. Uh, name is Barry O'Neill spelling like the fruit. So O'Neill fruit. Yes. I don't know why. I don't know why. The gay, it's, it's, it's a gay man it's named O'Neill. No. So um, good. Like, what's an O'Neill fruit? Like, what? <laughs> that's something I would normally ask. Well, well. Well, bluff act, bluff ax. Uh, try harder. You've got to. I... You have to accurately agitate your sorbet. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Chander, you're absolutely right. The player most likely to gender bend is the one who didn't. <laughs> right? We swapped. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta switch it up. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad because I was like, I don't want a party of just all dudes. <laughs> and I think that most most of our most of our male presenting cast members wouldn't dress as women. Most I know two to three of them absolutely would, besides myself, and that would be <laughs> Michael, Chris, maybe Traz. I think we could probably get Traz in a wig. <laughs> well, and but two of you have big beards. <laughs> I think that I think well, no, Chris keeps shaving his off, but I think oh, I think right. Traz would do it. But I think he'd be like. Hi, my name is Josephine Khan. <laughs> you know, or something like that. Like, I think he'd I go. If you're in the Traz, Traz, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm Traz, sorry. I will run a one shot during Extra Life for you if you do that. But you know, it's good. Um, okay, so folks, uh, any questions, comments, concerns before we head back in? You're Let's awesome. This it. is great. Yep. Oh, you guys having fun? And Christine, are you doing okay? You're... This is fantastic. Is there anything I can do to involve you more, Christine, as a light keeper? Um, well, I think once we hit, like, the rest of it where combat is going to happen. Oh, don't worry. I, uh, you're probably going to die. And Amy, you, you took dark fate as a flaw. You're I definitely going to die. Yeah, uh, I, I apologize in advance. I hope you don't love these characters. Maybe we can clone them. <laughs> I kind of love this character, but I also definitely plan for them to die. To die. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah um, no, I just didn't realize like when I was taking it, how restricted mind is. So mind from is doing anything in an area. It's so, well, it's just you need to be in line of perception. I I know, but I think we've done it in other games where the, that's not the way it is. Like you can sense an area. It's not that you have to be able to see the person and know that they're there before it's you not, can do it. It has to be inside of your sensory range. So not necessarily percept like you don't have to see it, but like if theoretically you could catch a whiff of them on the breeze, or if you could like theoretically, if there is nothing that would block one of your senses from potentially reaching them is the way I run it. So yeah. if you have your back to a wall next to an open window and you can hear somebody, you yeah. can. Or I just was under the impression that mine could do like a certain distance. So you could conceivably look at a space before going in and kind of clock how many people were in there. Cause you would get the sense of their minds being there. You could do that with correspondence and You mind? could definitely do that with the point of correspondence. I think that it would be, I mean, you could do it with mind and enough successes, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, it would be more difficult because you would have no way of like penetrating the outer shell of the house. Mm -hmm. But. I mean, once you entered the house, you could have. Yeah. Basically the second the door was open, I was, I was willing to allow it, but. Well, we are uh, about to go into a boat where there will be lots of people to yes, mentally investigate. <laughs> and remember, you can always explode their brains. Yay, yep. brain explosions. Yay. I don't think I can. That's a oh. higher level. That's like mine oh. four. Nope, oh. nope. That's uh, mind. <sighs> mind two can do psychic damage. Mm -hmm. uh, mind three can do lots of psychic damage. 
Uh, like I, four is when you start like controlling somebody remotely, kind of. And... Okay, because the the Nine Spheres book doesn't say that. So okay, that's where I'm getting confused. Then hmm. okay, sorry. Uh... Um, did you check? How do you do that? Maybe that has a bunch of stuff. Um, I'll check Nine Spheres real quick just to see if that can help you. It's kind of at oh well, kind of at mine three. It says mm -hmm. about. It mentions that there's a possibility of bashing damage. In 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 uh, how to do this because this is why I dealt with with learning Holly for the five things because Holly only had like mine three. Um, it's like page around like page one twenty two in the, um, how do you do this is like all stuff about like overloading people's brains and okay. psychic blasts and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I need to check more stuff on entropy because I have no idea how to do entropy. Entropy's a really hard one. Entropy's really hard. <laughs> So, I, yeah, I, I find how, how do you do this really <laughs> difficult to navigate because it doesn't break it into spheres like the nine spheres book does. So um, they have so, so um, the nine spheres book. Um, so I'll give you a couple of ideas real quick. You have mine three, you said? Yeah. So here are four things that you can do with that that are pretty good. Uh, share perceptions. So you could share anything that you can perceive with somebody else who's in the same area as you, like mystic perceptions. If you're seeing a hallucination, you can share that. Uh, you can do see auras with mind one. You can conceal or alter your own. Uh, auras are pretty good for detecting emotional states. Uh, telepathy, you can do. Um, and that establishes a mental communication with someone. Um, then translate languages is good uh scramble mind patterns so you can confuse people uh you can do psychic blasts or influence their moods you can also do things like uh make them sleepy or confused with three uh, and so on the other thing about mm. mind magic is that it is the difficulty is not based on the casting it's usually based on the person's willpower so um the sliding scale gets pretty gross pretty quick in a fun way for you hmm um, anybody else have any more questions about what they can do with their spheres just as we go in? Because I know some of you are playing different spheres. Okay. All so, right. I, oh, I did have a quick question. Yeah, um, please. I know that with matter, you can turn matter into different things. Can I turn matter into prime? So you have prime three? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So you can, you can basically use uh, prime... You don't really need the matter for it. I mean, it, it probably helps a bit. So using matter and prime to dissolve objects back into their base components of a prime. Yeah. Um, and then so, can I use that? Yeah. Yeah. With prime three, you can suck it right into your pattern. Nah. You can even, okay. uh, at prime three, you can sacrifice people in theory. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, the more important the item it is to you, the, the more quintessence you get. Um, all right, so you are going into a potentially dangerous situation. I would like to know if anyone is doing any magic prep beforehand. Now, would this be a situation where I would want to maybe have like an entropy shield up to make it less likely that I'll get hit by something? Could do, could do. Okay, sure. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, so think of all the effects that you want to have up right now. Uh, this is a one shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to play hard and fast. I'm going to give you double successes uh i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you scene duration so long as you succeed okay so just for for ease of operations um so for entropy if you just want that type of shield uh do you want this to actually your entropy rating is what my entropy rating is three okay now so, i also i don't know can i mix that with something like prime or correspondence to help like with displacing things around me yeah, I don't just... see what, I don't see why not. So uh, entropy three, okay. um, uh, basically manipulation. So with entropy three, you can give yourself particularly good luck. Mm -hmm. So that basically means that uh, it would be uh, quite good, uh, but not enough to like save your life necessarily, or do, or like move a bullet out of the way. Uh, but if you mix correspondence in, I think that should be enough to basically allow um weapons to be more um basically will give you kind of some slide off armor so why don't you go ahead okay. and give me a roll uh give it to me a difficulty of five instead okay. of six actually give me a, it is a combined so give me a difficulty six tell me how many okay. you get okay and uh can i i would like to spend willpower okay one success automatically okay um can would spending quintessence help me here it would lower the difficulty by one for per point. i will do that 
So that will be difficulty five then for if I spend quintessence. Is that understanding? Good. Okay. Um, now I'm guessing I'll probably want to do multiple rolls for this because I want it to last for the rest of the evening. And yep. So spend so, spend into power and uh, and successes. We'll see what it does. Okay. Well, let's see what I start with. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, so I we said because I spent quintessence that made it difficulty five. Yep. Okay. So I'm starting off with two successes. Okay. Okay. And then does it go up by one for to keep casting? So we're just gonna we're just gonna do single rolls to make life easy. Okay. Um, but I'll just say that if you succeed, it'll last for the remainder of the game session. Okay, so, so I got two successes there. Two successes, and that's with mm -hmm. the willpower? That's, oh, three with the willpower, sorry. Okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's probably good. Uh, no, so uh, what this can do is this can, you know, this is a pretty high combined effect. So do you want this to be, I'll, I'll give it to you in two ways. This will either raise the difficulty of damage to hit you, mm -hmm. uh, or will give you automatic soak. I want to make it harder for them to hit me. Okay, so we will yeah. say that you are uh, all damage dice against you are at a plus two difficulty. Okay. Okay, so that means that if I try, if I hit you for like ten successes, if I have to roll ten damage dice, I'm looking for eights instead of sixes because you're okay. just lucky. Uh, okay. Any other things you need to cast? Okay, moving on to Edith. You can come back to you, uh, Edith. Uh, anything you want to cast or have ready? Um, can I do something similar with forces? Uh, forces makes it way easier, actually. So what you can okay. do is have forces two up, uh, and basically give me forces two. You're a difficulty of three for this. Okay. Now, if I wanted, oh, four. um, four. I'm wondering, so with forces three and prime three, yes. I can, like, can I like soak, like if I get a bullet shot at me, can I soak that into my shield and turn it into quintessence? Um, you basically want to have a recharging shield. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, or like, could, could it, could it on a successful soak? Maybe like yeah, I still you know what I'll say I'll say that if it low yeah if that's part of the effect you're gonna roll a difficulty of of seven for this for the casting okay. but if it lowers the damage to zero then it will give you a point of quintessence. Sick. Okay. Um, I'm going to eat one of my tasks and use a yep. quintessence on this. So okay. this brings me down to difficulty six. Yep. Spend a willpower on okay. it to make life easy. I will do that as well. Uh, and that is two successes plus my willpower, so, so three. three successes. Okay, so what I will say is going to happen with this is that uh, every time you take damage, you will automatically forget about the first uh, the first two points of damage that comes into you. Okay, awesome. And then if I roll a successful zero out soak, I get so a point. Basically, of if I don't overcome your soak with a hit, with a if, with a it's going to be with a projectile specific. Yes, projectile exclusive. Yes. Yeah. Um, so like a punch cool. wouldn't do it, but a bullet would. Um, yeah. So in that, actually in that case, you can take away the, the, the pre damage. Like, like I'll, I'll, I'll take regular damage for soaking. It's just, if a mm. projectile comes at me. Oh, okay. So you want this to just be projectiles. Sure. Okay. Sure. That sounds great. Okay. That's yeah, can I, can I have two going? Can I roll a separate one for yeah, you totally just can. regular damage for regular kinetic? Yeah. So we'll have yeah. that's your chargey charge. You know what? Let's just say that it's the same shield for for ease ease of operations for a one shot. Okay, I okay. got a success on just a regular shield, so sounds good. All right, um, uh, Henry, do you have anything you want to have up? Um, yeah, I would like so um tethering with correspondence to just bamf out. Um, what is like a range on that? Uh, universal. So cool. so long as you have a, a intimate intimate connection with something, so like your house. Or like yes. your boyfriend or girlfriend, like you could do that. Um, an item that you have that is close to you, things like that. Um, yeah, I would like to tether um, to my... Um... I'm going to say that you already have it. Oh, okay. For a, for a, you have correspondence three? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can have, you already have a chain to something that's like your house or something. Okay, There's no cool. reason why you wouldn't already have that set up as a correspondence mage. 
Yeah. So there's slight slight assumptions on a one shot. Okay, yeah, I don't I don't think I can really do much to prepare. Like I have correspondence. You could use correspondence one to lower the difficulty of all hand eye related um, uh, physical traits. Oh sure, yeah. By having spatial awareness, so give me that at difficulty three. Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. Um, two successes. Two successes. Okay, so um lower all the difficulty of basically anything that involves spatial perceptions for the remainder of the game by one. Okay, sweet. All right, Christine, is there anything that you want to precast? Any mind shields maybe, or? Um, yeah, I was thinking mind shield. How much stuff can I have up though before so I start every, having trouble casting every, later? Every two raises your difficulty by one. Okay. Um, I might just do mind shield then. Okay, so that's going to be a mind two usually. Um, and I say usually because they did change some of the things between editions as they want to do. Um, mm -hmm. So a mental shield uh, in my book is usually a mind two thing. Um, let me just double check how they have that here. So there are two ways that I can do this. One is that it raises your uh, effective willpower. Mm -hmm. um, the other is that if there is a minimum number of successes needed that, you know, we'll say that it raises your effective willpower. That's probably the easiest. Let me just double check okay. one thing real quick. So I have it listed here as a uh, level one mind. Oh, wow. In nine spheres. Damn. Yeah. It says that... sense thoughts and emotions, mind slash mind shields slash empower self. Yeah, that works for me. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me just check one thing that will affect you later so that I'm not I'm not cheaping out on you. Mm -hmm. um, so do that just works. Uh, manipulation difficulty of. Um, so we'll say that this. Uh, so there's two ways we can do this. One, it adds to your willpower for purposes of overcoming it. Uh, the other is that it adds to any roles to defensively protect your mind. That's probably the easiest one. Yeah, I think that's the one that I'm used to using. I think that's probably the best. So um, go for as many successes as you can. Okay. And it's just rolling at Arate, right? It's just rolling your Arate. Difficulty of three if it's mind one. I miss the old way. Of... Are you spending willpower? Um, no, I will hold on to those because I'm imagining we'll need them in the actual situation. <laughs> yep, good chance. What was the difficulty? Three. Nice. Two successes. Okay. Because I was uh, prepared for none there. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I'm just going to say that you'll you'll have an auto soak of two on top of whatever you roll. Okay. Okay. So just remind me that I need two more successes than what I think I need to, to influence your mind in any way. Okay. All right. Anybody else need anything? Go. Going around the circle one more time. Whoop. Whoop. Okay. So I've got things to help make me dodge and evade things. Is yes. there? Can I put an effect to make my aim, my attacking more effective? Absolutely. You have entropy one. What else do you have? Uh, correspondence one. Yep. Prime one and mind one. Yep. Uh, an entropy and uh, yeah, do it at difficulty three. Entropy and uh, entropy and correspondence together mean that okay. even if you put the bullet in the wrong place, it's the right place. Excellent. Uh, and I don't think spending quintessence or willpower makes a huge difference. You can't difference go lower than three. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, let's roll. Uh, bit, bit, bit. Got a three, a two, and a one. Well, you fail. I uh, failed. I'll, I'll let you try one more time at difficulty four. Okay. <laughs> I might right. spend willpower this time. Okay, sounds like good. Sounds yeah, good I'm, I'm gonna. Um, That's better. Okay, that's three total. Three total. Okay, so you'll be at a minus, uh, minus two to all physical like percent, like basically hand eye based actions. All all offensive hand eye based actions. Uh, anybody else have anything else they want to do? <coughs> okay. I uh, have spirit and matter. I don't know if that can do anything like preventative. Preventative. Uh, you could set up a spirit shield. Uh, if you're worried about ghosts. Uh, with matter, you have matter what? Two. You could, um, what's your weapon of choice? 
Um, my weapon of choice is um, brass knuckles. Okay, brass knuckles. Uh, you could um, you could make them more damaging. I would say. Okay. Uh, actually, you probably need you have matter or what? Two. Okay. Uh, so with matter two, you could lower their damage difficulty or give them uh, an additional bonus to damage by like sharpening them, basically. Sure. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll do or that. you could with matter make it so that you uh what was the alternative that uh you have armor basically reinforce your clothing oh Ooh, yes i would like to do that reinforce sounds clothing. Good. sounds good so uh basically every success you get over the first one will be a point of soak that you add to your sheet Sweet. um if you take uh aggravated damage it will destroy your soak okay lethal damage spend a willpower sounds good basically you'll just be basically turning it into kevlar uh, what was my difficulty? Difficulty on that's going to be four. All right. So that is uh, three successes with the willpower. With the willpower. So you're going to have two more dice of soak. So keep that in mind. Sweet. Um, quick thing as well. Um, so uh, so minus Edwin, he has minus two for offensive hand die rolls. Yes. Because you okay, were looking cool. for something. So uh, Henry only has a minus one. You have a minus two because you rolled better. Uh, and all right. Any last things before we go in? Okay. Um, quick question. Who has prime two or three? Nice. Uh, don't forget, you can always imbue yourself to do aggravated damage with your fist and or, uh, in your case, Christine, a weapon. So if you want to pre-have an aggravated damage weapon going, you may. Okay, sure. Let's, let's imbue my knife. That sounds great. So just give me a roll difficulty four. uh three successes okay that is that is good for the rest of like the 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 next month okay <laughs> so that's not going to do any additional damage but it does do uh aggravated if it strikes uh, e uh, edith's uh tools for putting on her shield is doing her makeup mm -hmm. which is a proper lady's shield against the world <laughs> And what are you hoping this does? Oh, to to it's just it's just how she casts her shield. Oh, so you're okay. It's so, just what she does to cast that other thing. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so Christine, I'm going to give you one point of paradox on your sheet when you use that. So yeah, I'm okay. just going to do it right now because it's going to happen. Um, and nobody else has any paradox, but that's fine. Okay, so all good to go. Mm -hmm. The longest part so. of any mage game is the prep, but this is why <laughs> you're about to see why in a moment versus what I have in store. <clears throat> Beautiful. We cut later to you boarding this refurnished prison hulk, this immense ship docked inside of the harbor. There you would think that there was a, um, well, there would be something about this that would be untoward. Now it's parked in the, or it's docked in the worst part of the dock, the place where you would think that some of the rich and powerful would fear to tread. However, there is evidence here that there are, well, fancier carriages. The streets are cleaner. There are very few working girls on the streets. You're not seeing very many Jennies at all tonight. Or any Jerry's? I don't know what the guy version is of Jenny. Uh, but working men. Uh, you will see that the shadows are not quite so dark. And the things that do dwell in them around this area are usually large, well-appointed men in suits carrying cudgels. This place has been cleaned of, a, of its element to some degree. It's not long before you make it up and into the ship. Now, I would like everyone, as you go in, to make me a Perception plus awareness roll. Christine, for this in particular, you will start off with two successes before you roll. Um. Okay. Now, would this be spatial awareness? This will not be spatial. Uh, yes, okay. actually, there will be a little bit of spatial awareness involved. So that means okay. that you will have a specialty, right? Well, no, that's just what my 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 correspondence stuff is. For, you said all specialty awareness rules. Spatial awareness. I'm talking with like offensive though, because you were doing it for like mm, fighting, right? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So hand-eye um, coordination. Um, if you aware... don't have awareness, just you just roll flat. Perception. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so it is awareness? Awareness was more of the supernatural senses, Absolutely. yes? Absolutely, yes. Is that something I can use, like, I can roll my prime to give me a bonus? Not because, like, you're basically just getting a vibe off the place. Got it, okay. So you wouldn't be consciously aware of it until it was brought up. Sure. About uh, what was the difficulty? Difficulty is eight. Okay. Two successes. Oh, really? One. One? I got three sevens. Okay. That's, that's yeah, I got a bunch of sevens that's as lucky. well. Uh, how much did you get total, Christine? Uh, so you said I got plus two? Yeah. Why do? Why am I getting that? Just Don't that. worry about it. Okay. <laughs> three then. <laughs> so as you're approaching, um, you're looking at this and you're a little, you're a little worried about this, Edith. This place looks less than reputable, but... You okay. see a few wealthy people headed up the gangplank into the ship. Some ruffle, some long skirts, some uh, some very nice suits. You're thinking, okay, maybe this is... Uh, maybe? It's yeah. good? Uh, it's kind of <laughs> iffy. Um, Henry, this place looks like good, jolly good fun. You are going to buy <laughs> into this. Uh the next time I ask for any type of roll like this, you are going to be uh, rolling at an increased difficulty because okay. you are just so in the moment. You're kind of like emotionally caught up. You're like, I'm going to have fun. And I'm going to kill some people. Um, Amy, looking at this, um, Edwin is going to take a look at this place and is just going to get a weird vibe. One that kind of speaks to you like a trust no one kind of vibe. However, the... You're not sure what's speaking to you, because the outside of the ship has been refurnished a lot. It's no longer this derelict vessel of misery. These prison hawks where they used to just cram person after person into rot away in a perpetual uh, state of almost quarantine from society. It's been refurnished. The fact they chose the ship is a little weird, but okay. It's kind of mm. odd. Um, and then Edwin, as you look at this, one moment, please... Do you mean Benjamin? I mean Benjamin. I mean Benjamin. Uh, so oh, okay. <laughs> lo looking at this, you are going to start to get a little bit of a headache looking at it. Because as you do, you are going to see its exterior begin to undulate between refurbished and a rotting, rancid hull. It's like double vision for you for a moment. It's going to crystallize at the end of it as totally refurbished, totally totally nice and good and and perfect but for a moment when you look at it you're going to see like rotten planks holes in the side uh and bodies floating in the water face down and bloated okay so based on that i'm thinking that there's an illusion up of some sort there may be can I try and see that with Prime? So, what you may do, one moment while I reference a <laughs> book that I specifically had to pull out for this for interaction purposes. <laughs> um, what you may do is... One moment. Well, this place looks undesirable, but... Oh, what are you talking about? This looks like about a it. jolly good place. I think we're going to have a lot of fun here. Kill yeah, some I'm people... Getting some pretty bad vibes so so you no, could you could things. investigate this with the mind sphere or with the prime sphere absolutely so um go ahead and just glancing at this i'm not gonna make you roll for this but turning on your prime real quick to mm -hmm. check it there is no active magical effect here You are going to look at this. There's no characteristic. You know there's something weird going on here. However, Prime tends to only detect magic. Okay. But you can feel the presence of something illusory. I guess. Um. Can is there you... like... I know there's like the base mind site for like trying to find people. Mm -hmm. Is there something with that? You absolutely can uh, try to just basically look at aura. 
Um, so give me a mind sight, uh, difficulty three. <laughs> three fours. <laughs> three fours, okay. Use focusing your mind. How do you do this? Do you just like kind of just really focus down because you're better than everyone else? That well, yeah. that's that's their paradigm. I know they're yeah, British I think and they're so. better. Uh, so yeah, keeping queen a, and country, keeping a stiff upper lip and like kissing a photo of the queen, um, <laughs> or a, or a portraiture of the queen. Um, you focus coin. a coin. Oh. So yeah, that would be it. Oh, way to be Edwin's friend right away. Kiss a coin. Uh, looking <laughs> looking directly through this, you are going to take a look at this. It is a rotting Hulk. There are bodies in the water that you can see. There is an illusion up here. Hmm. So somebody's projecting an illusion. But it doesn't appear to be magic. Can you make me... If you want to express this to others, uh, you may. But regardless, I would like you or anyone you share this information to to make me an intelligence and a cult role. Would I be... Okay. At a weird thing, like, would I be able to roll this if she's if he's explaining this? But I think it's not sketchy. I don't think you would probably. Like, I mean, you'd play it how you want to play it, is what I would say. Mr. Gardner, you seem terribly distracted. Um, somebody's got an illusion up, but it's not magic. What you're seeing isn't there. That's not. If it looks pristine and lovely to you, it's not. Oh, um, well, all right. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Can I make a? You said intelligence to cult. Intelligence and a cult. What's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty on this is going to be, I'll say, seven. Three successes. Um, well, you just met a ghost tonight. There are all sorts of things that are not magic that can affect the world. Five successes. There are any number of things that create illusions. Uh, fairies, for example. Fairies are, or something yeah. calling itself as fairies, are absolutely real and have the ability to warp men's perceptions. You'll know that for sure. Ghosts can, as you probably would have seen earlier. Uh, however, three successes or higher, you are better than any supernatural tomfoolery. You could rip down this illusion with counter magic. All you need is mind magic. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I specifically had to nope. find this book on my shelf for the rules for crossover. Amazing. Uh, and anybody who wants to help and has mind magic can absolutely do so. I think I want to see what I'm walking into. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so if they're trying to hide the bodies in the water like this, well, I think they need to be exposed. Goodness. Uh, so this is a coincidental thing because you are tearing down a reality-bending illusion. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you're a difficulty of, uh, let's see, uh, it's mind one to do this, so difficulty of three. Anybody with mind magic can pile onto this. Sure, I have mind one. Okay. I do hope we get to meet who did this. this so do we just pool our successes lovely. then for You'll this? You'll just pool your successes, and I already pre-rolled, so I know how many successes I have to have this up. And I get to re-roll 10, so it's an irritate roll, right? Yeah, you do. Nice. So I would roll as well? You do. You would. Okay. So roll irritate. Um, I'm sorry, what was the difficult? Three. T. Oh, well, in that case, wait, one, one sec. Four. Okay, so nine <laughs> successes. Um, <laughs> balls. Uh, okay. So... Uh, there is a tremble uh, for a moment, and then the other two of you, um, Henry, you're about to take a step onto the gangplank, and suddenly as you glance down, there is the corpse of a young man in his late teens, like just laying on the gangplank, uh, pale as a bloated corpse uh, that looks like he has been thrown off the top deck of the ship and landed on the gangplank and people have been walking over him like a lump in carpet all night. Like Henry, you're just going to about to set your foot down on this when they kind of 
focus using their magic and this illusion just shatters like glass and you'll just see this old rotten boat oh, well a good hell. show gentlemen and that's when the screaming begins because this is going to break for <laughs> everyone <laughs> Uh, and there is going to be the sound of shrieking and terror as a whole contingent of well-to-do people uh, are going to start streaming down the gangplank or leaping off of the top deck into the water. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> All right. Uh, Question. Uh, Henry had his hand up first, so we'll do yeah. Henry, then you. So, Henry... To avoid the people, um, I have correspondence three. Could I just teleport inside the thing without having to go through all the people? You absolutely could. You could also teleport with your friends if you get enough successes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Henry will try and do that then. Okay, I'd spend a willpower on this. You're going to be looking at uh, its line of sight. So we're going to say that it is, uh, this is definitely an uncanny effect. So yep. we'll say that's difficulty of six. It's catastrophic, actually. Um, <laughs> so how many paradox is that? Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be three. Kill. Or it's gonna oh, be I'm... one. It's only one in this system. What am I saying? Oh, uh, so, so go ahead and start prepping. I can that spend quintessence to lower, lower the, difficulty, the difficulty. Right? You absolutely. I will can. spend two quintessence to lower that to four. All right, that sounds good. And, and I spent a willpower. That sounds great. Uh, so you roll that real quick, Christine. You got a question? Well, so I have the scramble my like the scramble thoughts thing is a mind three effect. Yes. And my wonder was, I know I, I can't like necessarily like expand it over a whole area mm -hmm. because all the ones dropping off the boat I'm not going to get. But could I set and hold it for the gangplank to try and make people disoriented so that once they get off, it's like a fever dream, a drug dream, that this very supernatural thing happened to them. I'm trying to control the narrative here <laughs> so that they don't like start yeah. talking about this supernatural thing happening. like. So Very normally this would require thing. this nor would normally require a much higher degree of of or of mind magic. You usually need mind four for this. But what I'll do is it's a one shot. You're aiming for a specific target. Uh, what other spheres do you have? You have forces and prime. Prime. All now, let me... Amy and I did just combine a mind effect. That's fair. What other spheres do you have, Amy? I have correspondence, prime, mind, and entropy. So correspondence to hit the area Maybe with the mind entropy effect to help people how to help degrade the memory. Yeah. Because if you scramble it enough, people should default to whatever makes the most sense to them. Yeah. You're not so actually you're implementing a thought. You're just so bad drink, etc. Yeah, you're basically doing that. The other option I was going to say is It causes the target's do... train of thought to disappear, leaving them confused and disoriented. Is what it. Yeah, that does. sounds. That, that so they wouldn't you wouldn't choose what they had what they were thinking but you would definitely get... scramble it so hopefully not we wouldn't have a hundred people repeating the same story that sounds absolutely fine um you, what would your focus be for this just shouting like the wine's tainted or the the drink is the drink is drugged yeah exactly okay um... everybody's drinking this is Victorian London so oh, I'm gonna f can I also flash like a badge saying that like like and just be like this is it might not even say anything just be like drug control or something <laughs> that sounds absolutely fine uh so what i need you both to do uh robin what'd you get on your on your roll you got two okay you can keep going next round because this is active so give me that roll again at a plus one difficulty so that would be seven now uh, and both so of you. it doesn't carry open from the quintessence, quintessence. is only per roll. And I do have quint, so I'm happy to spend quint to lower difficulty. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, that's why willpower is super handy. So I'd like both of you to assemble a dice pool for your erite. You're looking at a difficulty of you're combining your spheres. Uh, we'll say that's difficulty of uh, for Christine. That's going to be difficulty of three. To okay. disorient uh because they're already disoriented um and amy that's going to be at a difficulty uh, of um you have correspondence what two yeah two i'll say it's a difficulty of four for you now i have two effects up already Does difficulty that make a difference? five for you okay mm -hmm. christine how many effects do you have up right now just one two i've got mind shield and the prime okay. knife then it'll be difficulty of four for you okay i'm gonna spend two quint to lower it to two 
So you can only lower it as max to a max of three or a min of three. Okay. You can lower never go lower then. than three, but you can I do. I will spend a quint to go down to four though. Okay, sounds good. And Robin, what'd you get on your on your roll? Um, so total four. Perfect. Oh, I love it. It's great. Uh, okay. And I just have to double check how much catastrophic does. Because uh, it always, rem I always, let's see if it's true. Uh, that's two tens so far. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's, I'm going to, and anybody who criticizes later, I am going a little light on the difficulties. It's a one shot. I don't care. Um, and I'm assuming everybody has a special tool on them. Uh, all right. So um, what did, so Christine got five, Amy got three. Three is enough to cover this area. Uh, and five is enough to, for it to be a particularly potent effect. I will say so it will cover the entrance and all of that and Robin on that. Yeah, I was but thinking kind of like the end of the gangplank so that people would get off the ship and hit it so that they wouldn't get disoriented on the ship. So it would get out okay. and go. <laughs> uh, hopefully they wouldn't. Okay, so I just have to remind myself how much paradox you get for catastrophic uh, because then life is going to get strange. So strange. Uh, reality zones, friendly utility. Uh, yeah, I know, we gotta hurry. Um, but, uh, 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 catastrophic magic means to overturn. Reality is frightening, heaven's opening up. I guess that would only be uncanny in this era. Sort of, that's weird. Um, successful one point of the straights and a botched roll is one point plus one. They've lowered the magic so much since revised. Um, okay, so that means that Robin, I'm gonna give you two points because this is just because it's more fun that way. Um, okay, so you are going to lay that down, shout your things at the front gangplank, and are going to um, to set that effect up right as Mr. Butters Butler's. Um, completes his his teleportation. How do you do that? Do you just like tally ho and like a lightning bolt carries you? Like how does that work scientifically? <laughs> I uh, I think he pulls out a small pocket um telescope and he looks into it and says that should work and as he closes it the people around him kind of snap with him. All right, with a sudden all of you are suddenly on the deck of the ship, the highest deck. There's a bit of a lurch in your stomach as you are all up there and people are are flooding out of here. You see that there are several people that lie dead on this deck and you're going to hear this noise come from behind you. Uh, you're kind of facing the front of the boat and behind you toward the actual like entrance into the lowers, you're going to hear... What's this then? <sighs> you don't fuck with my boat, bag. bitches. Well. And as language. you turn around, you're going to see an immense man who looks like a six foot four Jason Statham. With slightly more Irish accent. Holding a woman by the throat. Drops her to the ground where her throat has been ripped out. Blood is dripping down his face. And he smiles at you with a pair of elongated incisors. I'm going to draw my sword. I think it's and initiative point time, it. babies. <laughs> <laughs> and say something along the lines of, I think I need a bigger sword. It's what, dex and wits so plus 10? Plus a d10. Yeah, so plus one d10. Ten. Plus dex and wits. Plus dex and wits. And I think we can manage this in 15 minutes. Let's go. But believe in us. Dex 14. Ends. 14. Okay. I also so. got 14. All right. Who has, the, who has the higher number there? So what is your, what do you, what do you add to that? A six. I roll, uh, I'm also a six. Okay. Roll off. Uh, so yeah, roll a die and tell me what you get. Three. Four. <laughs> just, just be okay. just. Okay. Uh, and that is Barry, uh, followed by, so Barry... Benjamin. Uh, so who won between Henry and Edith? Edith. Edith. Okay. Um, and Edith. Edith. 
It's Henry, and pulling up the rear is going to be Edwin. Okay, so uh, just for for quick sake, uh, I'm just going to reiterate. It goes Barry Benjamin. If Luetta enters the fray at any point, she also has uh, the same initiative as Benjamin, but I believe a higher or a lower stat uh, than Edith, Henry, and Edwin. Uh, so you're going to draw your sword and say. I think I need a bigger sword. All right, and with that, um, now you're tr- uh, across the top of a, of a giant ship, and with that... I think we need some... Oh, that's a string waltz. Pardon me. I meant to do <laughs> this. Boy, it could be hard. And the 40 feet between you suddenly is gone in the blink of an eye. I'm going to spend four points of blood. Uh, oh, and, uh, Edwin, uh, you may make me a defensive roll on this first one okay. if you want. Uh, uh, I am going, this is going to be dex and brawl. So that is four plus two. How do I? So that's dex and athletics. Okay. I have a dodge listed on my sheet. Do I ignore that? Oh, you actually have dodge on that. Oh, it's the old I also suit. have athletics though. Like... Athletic uh, is so better. You may. Oh my god, these dice guys. It was Dex and. Okay. <laughs> Donate to the chat now to save Amy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna take. Okay, so I'm gonna just pretend Dodge doesn't exist and just put it into athletics. That sounds great. Athletics. Put it into okay. your athletics. Okay, okay. That's that's cool. Um, Yeah. And I'm going to spend a willpower. That sounds fantastic. Um, and it's a difficulty six? Difficulty or... six. Okay. Now, I have... Um, oh, I guess this wouldn't apply because I have hand-eye coordination specialty for dexterity. I'll allow it for this. this. Oh, okay. In that case, my dexterity... I will re-roll this ten. So that will lower your difficulty to four for these do- this dodge. I'll say. Oh, to four. To four because of your your rote. I I would normally not. Oh, uh, I okay. rolled twelve successes though to hit you. In that case, if it's down to four, that makes it one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay. Five. Successes. Perfect. Yeah. That is you know what only me only rolling eight dice of bo- or seven dice of bonus damage is probably a good thing. <laughs> okay. Every single die I rolled from the new set was a success. These are now my Jesus favorite Christ. favorite set. Wow. Okay, so base strength of a punch uh, is my strength score. Uh, which I forgot about the willpower, so it's actually... Uh, I am not going to spend blood for that. I instead, I'm just going to use my potent score as dice. Uh, and then I have five more dice to roll on top of this. Okay. Oh, good! Um, you're not dead. Uh... You very nearly were. Uh, one, <laughs> two, three, four. Okay. I knocked you over into a 10. You weren't a 10 a second ago. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So your armor absorbs how many points of damage, did we say? So you said it was minus two or plus two difficulty to damage rolls against. That's right. Okay. So that means that is not a success, but the rest will. Uh, he is going to suddenly appear in front of you and is going to crank you in the stomach for four points of bashing damage. Uh, which Ow. eight, eight, eight <laughs> nine, ten. Uh, and then uh, that is action one. Uh, he is going to do full judo maneuver, guys. Uh, so, um, this is happening in basically slow motion. Uh, he is going to headbutt you again. This one will not get a dodge roll. However, I rolled a lot of ones, so that's helpful. Um, okay. Uh, the headbutt is, so it's minus one. Okay, that's only going to be four successes on that. Uh, so that is only 11 dice of damage. Difficulty of eight makes this a lot easier. Uh, Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so, and then three more points of bashing damage are going to come in as he slams his face directly into your face. I'll say that his getting to you took a full action. Um, So he's going to like punch you in the stomach, crush your nose into your face, uh, and is going to grab you and hit 
who is closest to you, Edwin, or Bet? You're working with Benjamin. So he's going to grab you and use you as a melee weapon against Benjamin. Benjamin, <laughs> you may try to dodge this. I would like to. Right. Uh, so that's Dex and dodge. This is My be... health boxes are full with bashing. So that means that you are basically like on the verge of unconsciousness. Like... Oh, no. Do I have so to spend like willpower? Willpower to not faint. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what was the difficulty? Difficulty is six. Sweet. Uh, that is five successes. Okay, three of which so, were tens. Okay, so he does not have nearly as much melee as he has brawl. So give me one second on this. So he's got <laughs> three that. And then he has an additional dex of Jesus. Uh, okay, so one success. Uh, two successes. Three successes. How many did you get? Five. Oh, hold on. I've got... One of you was a 10 a second ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he is going to grab... Uh, he's going to slam you in the head, like with his forehead, crush your nose, grab you by the throat, and try to slam your head through Benjamin. Benjamin is going to dance out of the way, and that is the end of my turn. Benjamin, it is your turn. What do you do? I want to stab a motherfucker. <laughs> I, think you, I think you should. Uh, one moment. Now, specialties I... give me 10s exploding, right? Yes, they do. Yes, I have specialty knife fighting. Perfect. Okay, so I will get a reflexive dodge uh, against this. So. Uh, and don't tell me. Well, let me just check one thing real quick because they did change things for V20 from I'm used, more used to revised. Uh, da, 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 one died in addition. Okay, cool. Uh, so that means I have dexterity six. And my athletics is three. Can I beat Christine on a dice roll? <laughs> oh, God, I might. Oh. Uh, one, two. How many did you get? I'm not done yet. I'm rerolling tens still. <laughs> okay, I still have to reroll tens as well. Okay, I think you might have got me. I think you might have got me. Uh, what was the difficulty? Difficulty six. Sweet. Because you didn't put in any, like, combat enhancing attacks. How many did you get? Nine. You got nine. <laughs> okay. And you're doing egg. Oh my you're doing god. Egg. I'm rolling eight dice. Right away, rolled four tens. Okay, so <laughs> they rolled what, two of them into tens. What I and another need, ten. What I need from you is you're going to be rolling your strength dice, plus uh, you got four successes over him, so he only got five successes. Okay. Uh, so you're going to be rolling strength plus four aggravated. Strength plus four? Four dice so and your strength score. Holy crap, okay. You're looking for so sixes. So that's basically, I'm rolling my melee again. Yep, so you're looking for sixes. Uh, and do not subtract ones. We're, we're playing like that this round. Okay. <laughs> and does anything explode in this one? Uh, not unless... You know... It's a prime blade. It's not like it really is going to not cut through a vampire. <laughs> like, I'll, you, you know what? I'm going to say no, it won't explode. I it won't explode. <laughs> you know what? I will say it will explode because you got more successes than you needed. <laughs> oh, shit. That's another 10. Oh, that's another 10. Eleven dice of aggravated damage. Yeah, <laughs> you said over six. Okay, I how, got several tens, nine. How sevens, do you want to do this? Six. How do you want to? How do you want to gank this guy that just like grabbed your friend by the throat? Oh no. Um. Well, I saw the fangs, so I think I'm gonna go with superstition and the whole cutting the head off thing. Uh, all right, so um, it is. He's going to go like you're going to take a swing at him. He's going to duck out of the way and be like, "You got to try harder than that, Prince." And I'll swing Whoa. back. No, no, no need, no <laughs> need, because it's the samurai cut. It's the, and he's just going to start to like dissolve to ash because aggravated damage. Uh, and Gross. well, that was quite a rude thing to do. You'll hear a woman's voice directly behind you. Um, glancing behind you, there's like a main mast, but there's like two of them. And a woman steps through a mast. 
And uh, Christine, do me a favor. Um, I'm going to get hurt. <laughs> you are. I need you to roll me your perception. Uh, okay. Your perception, because you do not have self-control. And willpower is not the same thing. Okay, so just perception? Yep. And I'm going to spend a willpower and roll my... my manip oh, actually, no. I, I can't spend a willpower on this. What's the difficulty? Difficulty is going to be six. This is just a contested roll. Three. Three? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, you got off pretty easy. I only got two successes. On oh, shit! I only got two successes! I only got two successes. Your mind shield is going to hold. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, let me double check my one, two, three. Oh, no, 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 I get one. I got one. I got one through. I got one through. I, I need this for myself, <laughs> but I got one through because that 10 exploded into a nine. Um, yeah, so I technically would have had five total, I guess, if the plus Don't two you know that murderers burn in hell? Uh, a woman with like a swarthy Italian complexion will step out and say that. And as she says that, the heavens will part just for you. And holy light is going to start searing the flesh off your skin. Uh, you're going to take one point of lethal damage. This That's is not, not soakable. Uh, um, and everyone else is going to see uh, Edwin look down at his hands and just start like trembling. Benjamin. Oh, sorry, Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin looked down at his hands and just start trembling. And maybe screaming. I don't know. But nothing is happening. Nothing is happening at all. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is what she's going to do. Um, and Edith, it's your turn. Um, I think you skipped me. Did I? Oh, damn it. Yeah, no, I was no. 14. Oh, I thought you were after Edith. You are. Oh, I right, yeah, no, yet. I thought I was after <laughs> Benjamin. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I got confused. Lou, uh, yeah. So, uh, Edith, then Henry, then Edwin. Um, okay. I would like to... To what? Make her more material. Okay. She seems to be very, like, I'm gonna not be, my, be here. I'm going to sort of make you think I'm elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I would like her matter to become denser so that she is easier to see. You know, I was gonna argue with you because she's technically, I was gonna say life pattern, but she's not a life pattern. She's equivalent to balsa wood because she's a corpse. Um, so uh, <laughs> vampires count as matter according to the book I was holding earlier. Um, cool. So you have forces as well? I have forces three, matter two. Uh, so what I will say is give me a roll with a difficulty of, we'll say that this is a difficulty of six and it's equivalently fairy fire from D&D. Sick, I am into that. Okay, um, so, I'm going to use a willpower for one do. success. So anyone who attacks her, if this works, is going to get a bonus number of die equal, or pardon me, a... Yeah, a bonus number of dice on their attack equal to your successes. Dose. Okay, so anyone that attacks her... So what do you do? Is this like a cloud of perfume or something? Uh, Yeah, I would imagine she has she has a... a she reaches into her bag and pulls out, like, yeah, like a little horned... Uh, uh, a little puff-ended uh, perfume bottle uh, and goes, uh, you know, it's just rude to bounce between your guests. Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> And yeah, she's going to be glowing and like, what in bollocks? I guess that's something they say. Um, <laughs> and uh, Henry, this person is now glowing brightly. Yeah, that kind of changed what I was going to do. Uh... Are we going to teleport them into the sun? No, I was going to teleport Edwin out because he looks like he's about to die. So <laughs> Does anybody have time like... three? No. Oh, no. okay. I considered going heavy in time. Kind of sad I didn't. <laughs> um, I guess. Ooh, ah, fuck. Um. What do you do, Henry? Uh, brass knuckles. This vampire bitch, I guess. Okay. Sounds good to me. Do you have prime two? No. Okay. What do you have uh, in terms of magic? I have... Uh, matter, correspondence, and spirit. Okay. 
Um, I would allow you to, because the vampire is non-living tissue, you could use your brass knuckles as a focus to deal additional damage to matter. Sure. So the way that it works is I need you to make me a difficulty four Arate roll. Okay, and then another difficulty because I am have to expect so. Sorry, yeah, so difficulty five. So let's do it. Um, three successes. Three successes. Okay, so that means that you're going to be dealing an additional six levels or six dice of damage if you hit. Oh, shit. Okay. So a lethal as well because you're going to be rending the pattern with this punch. Okay. So I need you to make me a dexterity and brawl roll. Okay. Okay, and she, is, she will try to dodge. Um, yep. However, she has like six dice to do this, so we'll see how that goes. Two, you know two, what? Four, Could have been worse. Two, and she doesn't get a reroll uh, that, Kelly. Put it down. I can spend a willpower to succeed, right? On yes, you can. Ones? Okay. I'm going to spend a willpower. I should have um, spent a willpower. Do I get a minus difficulty for um, spatial you, awareness? Uh, yes, you do. So difficulty four on this, and you get two more dice from Krista. Do I? Yep, because yeah. she cast the fairy fire style effect. Oh! right absolutely i can be a support caster in every game <laughs> oh that's all that's all that's all okay what was my difficulty for you said four okay well that takes out that one does that and uh, that's two f four successes five successes with the willpower okay five successes what you were going to do then is i need you to roll versus difficulty of six mm -hmm. oh boy uh you said you got how many how many points? Four total? Six? Five. Five? Okay. What? So what you're gonna do that's sorry, my, my brain was doing math. So you're gonna do uh strength plus five. Uh you're gonna roll your strength plus eleven dice of lethal damage. <laughs> it's only twelve, because I have <laughs> I have one strength, but okay. <laughs> so it's only twelve. Okay. Uh, uh, so you you are looking for, uh, you're looking for sixes. Twelve. Okay. Oh balls! You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> um, did you say tens reroll? Tens? Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> we we have two minutes left of game. Tens reroll okay. like Do crazy. It. Destroy her. Okay, so two, four, six, eight Wreck successes to start and three tens. Holy um, shit! Eight, ten successes. Ten successes. All yep. right, I got three successes worth of soak. So that is seven levels of lethal damage as you crank this this dirty vampire uh, down into the deck. Uh, this is, this is going to be like a Mortal Kombat cinematic where you're going to do it like punch. The camera's going to zoom in on all the internal organs liquefying. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing Mortal Kombat 11 a lot recently. Sorry. Nice. Uh, she, oh, she had fortitude four. <laughs> I have eight dice, like eight dice of we soak We're just the this. high rollers club here. We're just okay, the high uh, rollers. she is going to like hit the ground. She still is technically up. Uh, While well, she's on her knees, as you crank her to the to the side. Uh, Edwin, it's your turn. You may spend a willpower to suppress wound penalties. I'm gonna do that. Yep, I'm gonna just sort of like hand on nose to kind of just like. Oof. <laughs> All right, bitch. And uh, I would like to um, stab her in the face sure. or wherever Language. seems like the best place. There's a lot with... of great places to stab her. Yeah. Uh, um... So she is on her knees. She cannot dodge. You yeah. are above her. You have, uh, give me a dexterity and melee, difficulty five. Yeah, okay. So spend a willpower on this if you want. I will absolutely spend willpower on this. And uh, Specifically, looking at my fencing with my specialization in this. True. Yep. And you said dexterity. Oh God! Wait, so she's already. I have specializations for both hand-eye coordination and fencing. And you're at <gasps> a minus two on all physical action. So difficulty three. Yeah. Difficulty three. Plus, plus two right. dice. To and plus two for. And the... plus two dice. Okay, I'm rolling fire. ten dice right now. On difficulty three. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. And you're spending and a willpower? Or you cannot spend a willpower because you're spending a willpower I spend to stay it awake. To stay awake. Um, uh, as Soul Omen in the chat says, you have the high ground. Yeah. I loved you, Luetta. <laughs> you were no, the I chosen. Didn't. You were the chosen vampire. <laughs> like, just spitting out blood and just, like, stab. All right. You said difficulty three? Four? Yeah. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. Well... 
That's a one. I don't like that. But <laughs> you know what? That cancels that out. And the rest of these are successes. So that's so, eight. Okay, eight successes. so roll me your strength. Plus, uh, I'll say that you have a, uh, that a fencing sword in this case. It's a really good one, so it'll be a plus three. Uh, so roll me your strength plus... How many? You said eight? Strength plus ten. Yeah. Strength plus ten, ten like ten dice? Yeah. Or a ten lethal? Ten, strength plus ten lethal, difficulty six. Okay, well, damaged. I'm going to roll the strength first and then the <laughs> ten dice separately because I only have ten dice. All right. So okay. She's going to try to soak this. What kind of World of Darkness player are you? Uh, dip, 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 dip. I, my other dice are elsewhere. I just oh, usually fair. doesn't need it. Okay, so I got two fives on that first roll with the, I... for the strength. Okay. And then, uh, do one subtract? No. For damage? No, we're not doing no. that this time. Okay, so that's uh, what what am I going for? for sixes. Success? You're going for sixes. sixes. Okay. Yeah, that's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. So that's four. She, she soaks three. You needed one. <laughs> I am not even kidding. Seven, seven, seven eight, eight. Um, <laughs> all right. So with, gotcha. a, with for queen Just and country. Stab. And you... then I feel like he's going to black out as soon. Well, this like after stabbing. All right. Stabbing her. Over. <laughs> she will quickly rot down as you, as you, um, Just... deftly dis probably behead her with that just like cut her head off uh and her body is going to start to rot down to a 70 year old corpse yep i'm gonna flick any blood off and sheathe the saber again and then just be like had it oh why is the room spinning and then we'll probably just keel over <laughs> with, with that uh, the the rest of your investigation and return will reveal that the this ship was being used to basically uh, use strange mind control serums derived from the blood of the undead into the aristocracy. The detoxification period that followed was quite rough for them, but you know, that's their problem. At least that's what the queen thought. From there, you were all awarded a medal of honor. Uh, or at least a, uh, not a medal of honor, but like a, a commendation uh, from the order, and uh, we're all repaired accordingly. In fact, it's not too much longer before your group is brought together one final, well, not one final time, but one more time, as a message is brought to you by Mr. Batty. Um, excuse me, sir, lady, another message for you. As you're riding through the city several days later, it clips through in the mnemonic device. And as you open it up, it simply says, It's the farmer again. This time it's not cats. And I think that's where we're going to end the game. Uh, <laughs> nice. That was so cool. good. Oh, fantastic. Uh, nice. All right. So, folks, we did it with only four minutes overtime. There you go. Yay. That good. fight went so much quicker than I thought. I'm like, this Bruja is going to kill them. Like, he's just going to mush them. I, I was really excited to use a forces thing that I didn't even have to use. I very <laughs> specifically I took a singular specialty in yes. my abilities because I wanted... <laughs> To be able to re-roll those tens. <laughs> it's they're so useful. They're so useful. Um, hey folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, if you love what we do here, be sure to check us out in 25 minutes for Ghost Hunters, which I'm also running. I'm gonna go eat some food between there. Uh, so we might be like a minute or two late, but come back I'll and see us. Face. Wash our face, uh, put on different costumes. We love you very much. Be sure to follow us over on here on twitch.tv slash shortkills or youtube.com slash shortkills, which you should be watching right now. Uh, and uh, if you love what we do, you can support us over on patreon.com slash shortkills, which you know, like DM Michael Gray, Sol Omen, uh, Precarious, Terran Buddy, Trizalta, Cubby Gummy, Olus, and Amberthus are all people that I guarantee uh, are some of the finest people on the planet. You can join them over at patreon.com slash dorktales, where we do tons of stuff for you. Anyway, we love you very much. Uh, stay Victorian. Stay magical. I just stopped being Victorian. <laughs> it's true. You're a Vancouver. Oh, in so right. many ways. All right. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. Come watch us. Uh, come watch me actually kill these people in, a, in about 20 minutes for Ghost <laughs> <Not> Hunters. <me. laughs> Bye, Bye, everybody. Thanks for playing, guys.
Thank you. And thanks to Onyx Path. Bye. Yeah.